back, and I, I just, this is ridiculous. We can't even get the opening jokes in because we have movement in the I, background. I'm Jackson just... making a snack. Um, <laughs> Jackson's taking, Jackson's taking a, no, uh, an no, route he's taking a tight end, in the, in the tight end route. I might as well um, pull my general sews back out. <laughs> Like I said, welcome back to episode two of the Philly Escape Podcast. Jump in that escape pod, strap on. It's going to be a bumpy ride. And it's by already bumpy, been really bumpy. It's <laughs> already been, a, we've already hit a few speed bumps as it is, including Jackson bearing up uh, mid pod. Suspension up. is but, uh, It's going to be a bumpy ride. <laughs> <laughs> as you can see, as you can see, I'm joined by my lifelong friends here and Brits. Uh, we just work together. It's funny um, it's even funnier. It's no natural laughs. Any, anyway, what I was going to say when we did hit record is that my NFL comp is Devontae Smith because I'm always ready to get to work. Okay, plain and simple. That's um, funny because that's the part I wish that we didn't put back into the I'd second say, I say sauce. I say sauce. Wow. <laughs> sauce, I don't know. Maybe a little, little thinner, a little skinnier, but puts in the work. Either way, let's go to topic number one right on schedule or not on schedule, depending on how you want to look at it. There is no schedule. It's the Eagles schedule, and there is a schedule. They released it last week, so before you say it's not, there okay. is. Um, so like I said, the first recording, eight home games, nine away games, 18 total weeks of football, so we get one extra week where we get to get together on a Sunday, either scream at the television or you know be jumping up and down because Jalen Hurts may be our guy. Um, I say it's more first, than the first one. First glance, looking at nine and eight plus minus one game. Jackson's joining me on the dark side here. Um, I mean, nine is crazy. I think it's. Crazy, I, think it's like... I think it's. I and you'll get your. You'll get your fair shot, JB. You'll get your fair shot. But <laughs> nine, nine and eight, nine and eight plus or plus or minus one. Just looking based purely on the schedule, right? So just on the difficulty of the teams that I think we're facing, it's not. I'm not getting into the nitty gritty of like, oh, they play this team on 425 and it's after, you know, directly after this team that they play. And I'm assuming this guy's going to be hurt. We're not, I'm not going to do that shit today. Um, I think if we just kind of break down first glance, looking at all these teams and all these games, you know, what's the general feeling that you're getting from the Eagles this year? Um, I'm, yeah, I'm on the optimistic side. You may call it unrealistic, but at the same time, I think just with the teams that we're facing, just knowing that these are other teams that may not necessarily have a quarterback or have, you know, they might have a bunch of rookies and youth on their team. So I think this is a very a quick go around the room if we're looking at it first glance, you know, 2v2, me and Jackson versus Flay and Brits of, you know, why are they on the winning side of the 500 versus the losing side? I, mean, I just want to start off and say that just because I think that they're going to, take about seven wins doesn't mean I think it was going to be an unsuccessful season. I agree. I, think, I agree. I think that this is going to be a low win NFC East again this year. So, I mean, eight wins could possibly get you to the division. Nine wins I might definitely get you to the division. <laughs> might definitely get you to the division. I mean, it could, but I think someone's going to be better than eight wins this year. I think, and I think it might be the Giants or it might be the, I mean, it could be any of them because I think like, I'd say Washington, out of all three of the teams, it's most definitely not the Giants. I think the Giants might be good. Giants were upgraded. I, they were they upgraded, but I don't. Season. I don't have faith in Daniel Jones. I just don't see him That's the dark horse, taking the reins. I think he's holding uh, back that team a lot because I like the right. defense a lot. I think they made a lot of upgrades there. I think they're doing a lot of great things. Um, I'll have Saquon but, for the whole year. That's true. That's big. They, they might. Missed him they might yeah. have Saquon. <laughs> they for the might have Saquon. <laughs> Hopefully, and so I um, him in fantasy last year. All right, so here, here's, here's, I, because I agree with Flay's point. I, I think he actually made a great point. I think the goal, the objective of this whole season is just kind of have hope. Like, let's see how these young players come in and do. And you know, maybe we're middle of the tier. It's an upgrade. It's progress from last year. If you're moving from four and whatever tie, whatever the hell, to um, 
to you know maybe eight and eight and nine, like middle of the pack. I think that's the team that you're hoping that we become. Um, I'll take it a step further, even and say that I'm less concerned with wins, and I just want to see good football be played. There was so many times last year where the offense, and in particular Carson, like just frustrated the hell out of me. They were hard to watch last year on offense. It was it was difficult. It was really tough to watch at times. It's demoralizing. Yes. Almost. It was very demoralizing. <laughs> I mean, I can't remember how many times I was at your guys' house and just like I just wanted to just leave. <laughs> like it was just so bad. <laughs> I can't remember either, Brits, because I didn't have you at my house. <laughs> Not your house. Brits, we thought house. the same Brits, we thought the same thing, dude. Oh, okay, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> when I was watching those games, it was it was just so sucky to see Carson Wentz come out and know that there was like no chance that we were gonna convert the third down. And get a first, even when, even a first down. As much as so, I yeah, am a Carson you're, yeah. defender, you're right. I mean, it's so true. You just never had hope for them to to make a convert to their third down. Because you know when you have that general feeling when a guy comes in, like how much trust you have in him. Carson, it's like shit. Can he? I mean, win? I just didn't trust the entire offense. Like it was just like I thought like someone's gonna like drop a ball, like someone's gonna miss a block, someone's gonna do something wrong. I mean, how many? I mean, you could probably count them on two hands the amount of times that Carson drops back and needs to throw a ball away and instead <laughs> for, tries to I, force a play, takes a sack. Um, two yeah. hands? You're going to need a lot of hands. I think we need more hands yeah, than that. Need hands <laughs> uh, he, he was bad. I, I, he just, his decision-making was horrible last year. Yeah. No, but if we're looking at goals, I agree a lot with Flay on this one. I think you develop your young guys. You, you, I think you also – I don't know if it's this year. It's probably more of next year. Try to get guys in the mid 25 to 28 year old range. Like if you look at this team right now, we're a super young team. Yeah. It's a gap. It's a gap of rookies to veterans, and that's it. And what is what does that kind of tell you of, the, of your team? I think it's okay. The past couple years, two, three, four years, how he's not tra- drafting the right guys to the point where they are developing, or you don't have the coaching staff to get them to the point where they're going to be money makers, get the contract at 25 because they're they're developed and they turn into something. So we need to get – yes, we, I think we got a lot younger, but we're still old at the same time. How do we get in that middle range tier? Is it this year? Is it next year anyway? Um, and how does Jalen take a promising step forward so we know, yes, he's our guy? I think, I think we need questions answered. I don't think we need a winning division, or I don't think we're a competitive team where we're shooting for playoffs this year. Like Flay said, I want to see good football. I want to see it from our young guys. And I want to see what guys are going to give us the answers to say, yes, I want him on my team three to four years down the road from now. Yeah. I mean, it's definitely a huge season for just seeing which players we can develop, I think. Yeah. I mean, that's, there's going to be a lot on this new coaching staff. Like, they have a lot to prove in, like, in terms of development. Like, we have, like we said, we have a lot of new people, a lot of young guys. And it's like, the last two years have just been so bad when you think a guy's going to come in and be a superstar, and he's just a complete bust. And I think that happens well, with our team more so than any other team in the NFL right now. I think because of that, you can argue that maybe our coaching staff wasn't good at developing players, and then maybe this year with the new coaching staff, we'll really be able to see the players yeah. that weren't able to develop, maybe develop. That's what I mean. Right. Like, I'm just like, I like have high hopes for the new staff. I'm saying I just hope they And, and maybe, yeah. yeah, and maybe that translate and translates in the next couple of years where you see what they've got, those guys are if they get the right coaching behind them. Yeah, so overall, um, I think we're all in agreement on the, like, predictions of the, or not predictions, like, just our overall. Even just goals of, like, what yeah, we want to see this year. We want to see because it's, the team yeah. have good players. You know, we want to have be excited for guys, not so much, like, the whole team, because we don't expect much from the whole team because they're so young and, like, we don't expect them to pull out these wins that we don't expect them to. So I would say well, I would say that's not true given Caputi and Jackson's win uh win prediction. Well, Brits. I want to talk to yeah. Caputi. Oh, I think we could be hopeful. I think because I think that even though I would predict maybe like ten wins almost, I think the beginning of the season is going to be really rough. I don't think that we're going to win the first three I, games. I, well, I think so I actually agree the with Falcons, that. The Forty Niners, the Chiefs, um, the Bucks, the Raiders. And maybe even the yeah. Saints. Those are all L's. You're saying? Yeah, I think those are all L's. Well, and I so they don't play the they don't play the Saints like early, but they play the Chiefs. So that's we can we can say a loss. I think we're all in agreement on that one, just because it's, oh, it's yeah. the goddamn Chiefs. Yeah. So I think that Lucky we're going to split with our 
with Dallas and Washington. I think we're going to win out against the Giants. Ooh, I think it's going to be tough to win out against the Giants. Yeah, the Giants are always a weird Giants team. The football team. What did you say? <laughs> so weird. Still weird calling them that. So, but, yeah, so, I mean, side note, how disgraceful is it for their marketing team to not have come up with a name? Yeah, I, don't, yeah, yeah, I think about that. Here. I've been thinking about it as we research and kind of look into a lot of football stuff, stuff this past couple of weeks. I'm like thinking, how have they not come up with something yet? Do yeah. they just, what a failure of a marketing division. What a but failure anyway. of an organization. Hey, so, full year to come up with something. You, I mean, you could anything's better than the football team right now. Also, so, for the past like 15 years, we've known they had to change their name. They've had a long time to come up with one. Yeah, you think they weren't yeah. thinking about this years ago? They definitely had to be thinking about it. Yeah. I, I anyway. Think, I think they're kind of saying, like, all right, football team, it's a safe bet. It's not offending anybody because, <laughs> yeah. that, because that's what they're doing, that's what right? 2021 this, is. This, this can't be offensive yet. It's um, offensive to no one. <laughs> but I, I would say three words, right? Jalen, rookies, culture built. I don't want this That's to just be. <laughs> <laughs> Can I use that? Nice one, nice one. One. Gotcha. Uh, anyway, anyway, anyway. Um, no, I, I think it's not just about the players, but I think it's like, how do you set the organization up so that it's like, once you do get guys coming in, newer guys coming in the next years to come, they come into something where it's like, all right, I want to play for these guys. I want to, you know, this is the team that I want to be. It, it's a culture. It's a family. Like it's not. It's the. It's the 2017 year, all over again. Um, but it's this year's different. It's not like they're underdogs this year because 2017 they already proved something in the season, and so going into the playoffs they became underdogs with the loss of Carson Wentz, and then it was like, all right, we already proved it, and people don't believe in us. It's a different situation now. We didn't prove anything yet. You yeah. have to get to the point where we will prove something in the future. That's why I say the message here is hope. With yeah. the nine and eight, the ten and seven, even an eight and nine, I think is a great record because it shows hope that you're moving towards the future with the right culture, the right coaching, and the right players. And while while I, me and you are predicting higher win totals, I want to state that I don't think either of us would be disappointed with a seven win season. I don't think so. Yeah, I think I, you I, jump I, off from a bad season. Yeah, I'm it's still progress. I mean, I I was like. Honestly, before this whole the whole schedule release, I was even like almost at like five wins, maybe I thought we were gonna get. Also, I guess maybe six with the uh, added addition of a game. But now that I see the schedule we have, I think we have a like a solid chance to get seven, maybe eight. Um, but I'm probably think seven's my magic number. I think I think we're I'm hearing that we're swaying you, Brits. I think me and Jackson are. No, I mean I, I already I said before oh, seven's yes. my magic number. I think it's that's my okay. if, I to, okay. if I had to guess one number, it'd be seven. But then there's like a there's a plus minus in there. We could lose a game we're supposed to win, win a game we're supposed to lose. Um, who knows? But like I mean, the, I like I said, the schedule's a, a little bit teams. easier than I thought it would be. I think we're facing a lot of teams that could be better than they were last year, so it's yeah. sort of tough to figure out how good they'll be. That's that's true. It's gonna be like like this. It's I mean, so I hard. The, to I think I think the Broncos are gonna be a lot better than they were last year. Um, Chargers. Chargers, hundred uh, percent. Raiders. The Giants, obviously. I was saying that earlier. Raiders, Bucks, and Chiefs are still powerhouses. Um, so you got, don't, yeah, you have a lot of faith in the Broncos. Not yet. Yeah, I think I, it's just their quarterback situation. If they had a better quarterback, it'd be a lot better team. But so Jets let's all right, there. we're we're getting we're getting into the details. So why don't we do a week by week breakdown and not you know maybe not go over everything. Um, okay. But because you can see from our from our nice fancy board to the left to right wherever I should be pointing. Uh, um, the wrong way. <laughs> There you go. Um, Weatherman Caputi. <laughs> uh, we see a cloudy with a chance of a Kerrigan signing coming. Um, no, so I'm so we're looking at this right. Um, record predictions. Let's go into the details week by week. Um, kind of. So I'm a little bit different from Jackson and him saying like he's going to think it's be going to be a rough beginning. I think it's going to be like win loss, win loss, win loss kind of deal, and then maybe some win streaks, but not long win streaks. Um, so with that said, if we're looking at the Falcons, I think we go in, it's a loss, just first glance. They um, have a good offense, but we do too. We, we have a good offense, but not as good as theirs. And I think we like their defense, their defense sucks. Honestly, our yeah. defense, and I don't, I don't even know what they did in the draft, but if they didn't our defense, defense is probably then... slightly better. I mean, I think in order to win that, 
it's I think our be defense than theirs, right? Like our defensive line has got to come up big. We're gonna we're gonna break it's gonna up. It's gonna be an absolute shootout, though. We're, yeah. it, it's it's going to be yeah, I the over. A lot closer than what people think. It's the <laughs> over and under. I think it's still at three and a half right now. So I will. Yeah. So Bruce is taking the yeah, over. We, us we three and a half. might yeah, take the under. I don't know what the, um, the over under is, but it, it's probably going to be like upper forties. So we're all we're all L on that one. Throwing that. Yeah. yeah so, well, well. So I don't. So I've been, I've been predicting my schedule in the sense of like I just. I don't know what specific they're going to win, but I feel in the first three games they'll be they'll do one and two. They'll take one of these games. One and two. Most likely it'll be against the Falcons, but I I could see them. I mean, the Eagles have always been a team where it's like they just they somehow just win games they have no business winning, and then equally lose games they have no business losing. Talking Packers from a couple of years ago, we're talking, yeah. So, good point. Then we're going to start week, one and two. I, I feel like. Are a really good team. I think that they were hurt last year, and that made them worse, and us think of them we, worse. But I think we could easily lose to them if they're all healthy and performing as good as they were two years ago. I think we're starting off with a hot 0 and 2. <laughs> I'm just saying, sure. in the first six fresh, fresh weeks, the I think that we're going to be 2 and 4. Like, we're going to have a really rough start to the season. So we're, I mean, we're only a game difference there, Flay, where I have the, the 3 and 3 across the six weeks. So. I'll just give you the first six weeks from my end. I, I think loss to the Falcons, win to the 49ers, knowing that we'll be at home with the home opener, having the fans on our side should be full, if not, you know, high capacity of fans in the stadium that day. Um, whether they should be or not, you know, that's another question. Um, I think it's actually a win at Dallas. I think, I don't think Dallas is going to get up and running, but I think they'll get their momentum after the beginning of the season. So I think, I, think I mean, go you got Dallas and win. I, because we do win there. That's the thing. I think Dallas could come here and win, but I think we go to Dallas and win because teams do win there. Last I think... two years, we've but we've split games with them and both and we've both won our home games. Okay. I think. So I'm pretty sure. I we would have to check on that. I know last year we did. I'm not. Sure. I'm pretty sure the year before. I, I just know that going there, it's not like a dedicated loss to us. So I, I got I the three games. Either, but... I got the three games going, two and one. I think Dak still needs to kind of get his feet set coming back from. Pretty crazy injury. Yeah. Um, Chiefs easy loss in my mind. I'm surprised you're uh, counting the 49ers as a win. I'm counting them as a win. Yeah, I'm also surprised by that. I I think it's an Be- easy L. Because yeah, of same. easy. So that's where we differ. I, and we'll go Our into the details because we're like you know we're gonna we're gonna break down the first two two weeks. So I don't want to give too much away. But yeah, I I think I just I put a lot of emphasis on the home game aspect of it being the home opener um they are going to come yeah. out home opener i i think i think it like you said though i think it's going to be a shootout with the falcons and knowing that maybe we can take some of the men- momentum from that game and just carry it forward just with that offensive firepower it could happen it could happen we don't know i think I dallas would... is a win chiefs easy loss panthers be win. we start like four and oh loss to the bucks so i across the board i think a three and three Team is what I see from them. I agree. In that set of games, that's more optimistic than realistic. Yeah, I, yeah, like I would say two, two, and, two and four. I was is like the max be one and five. At that okay, point. wow, wow. So you have a long I mean, run I towards we could the end. Only win against the the uh, the Panthers, and that was even iffy. I could see it. I can't tell you. Yeah. it's not. It's it's definitely possible. I can yeah. see us. In the next two games, I think we win straight against the Raiders and the Lions. Yeah. Yes, and I think I I can definitely jump on that bandwagon. Going I have that here streak. for my two games. And yeah. then, again, without picking specific games, those next three games, I think we win one of those three. So, yeah, I, I think Who's I think I definitely Saints. agree with the Raiders-Lions back-to-back wins. I think that's where we really start to get, you know, a lot more comfortable in the team and just, you know, especially with a quick one-two punch away, not at home. Um, Vegas is going to be like the Los Angeles game, Chargers game from tw- the 2017 year. It's going to be the travel game where all the Eagles fans go there. Yeah. Probably take over the stadium, you know, maybe not completely, but um, I think that's an e- Eagles stadium takeover. They get that win. I, I, I just don't have a lot of faith in the Raiders. Uh, Lions, I don't think they're yet, there yet either. I think they, they're more of a future kind of outlook kind of team just looking ahead. But I think that's an easy back-to-back. 
I think the Chargers are another difficult game. I think Herbert's a beast, and he could take a big step up this year. I don't know if we could win. I think we could. I, I... So that's I one, I have. one of the games that we're light, light, least likely to win of those three. Yeah, I have yeah, them I, as, as a loss. I have the Chargers as a loss as well, for sure. It's, They're going to be a good team. They picked up... That, that offense is crazy. Yeah. I don't think we have enough firepower to hang with them. Unless our defense steps up, it's going to be like like a, like it makes a couple of big plays. That's going to be an L for me. I will say, this is the first time I'm seeing it like this, though, is that if they're going to give us hard games against like the Chiefs and the Bucks, it actually is kind of like a, a gift to give us those games at home. Early. And at yeah, home. I was, yeah, that's true. I, I was that's saying, true. I mentioned that earlier. Like two home, like both those games are home. Maybe we steal one. Ugh, yeah, nice. I mean, if and, if we yeah. pull one of those off, just from you know something, well, I would actually if, say if all we, of our hardest games are this, home. If we start one and five and we beat one of those teams, I'll be so happy. I'll still. That's be happy. why I noticed that Jackson. <laughs> yeah. That's why I noticed that Jackson. I was looking at the schedule and I was like, based on my like prediction, we're like losing all most all of our home games until the end of the season. What I think is crazy is I think the first half of our schedule is really hard, and the last half is a joke. Like, we could win almost every game in the last half. And, that, and that's why I'm, like, looking at the last so you half. Think, like so you think we're going to win out against the Washington football team, too, but then you think they're going to be better than us in the standings? No. Oh, you don't? You think we're going to finish above them? Yeah, See, I w- w- one word for this division, I think it's split. I think we split with the division games. I think the team, the te- all the teams in the NFC East are pretty middle of the pack. you got to think, guys, they're all coming from four and – 12 or 5 and 11 seasons. Yeah, but they all sucked last yeah. year. It, was, it wasn't just us. So it, it's an up, it's a much needed progress from them to go 8 and 9 or 9 and 8 too. So, I mean, that's you got to think, like, I can't see one of them jumping up to 13 and, and uh, you know, 4 at this point. Nah, I mean, I don't think it's I think we can go 4 like and that. 2 in the division. 4 and 2? Yeah. Maybe lose both against Dallas or win one against Dallas and lose one against either the Giants or the, or the Washington football team. Yeah, I, and, and like you said about the Chiefs Bucks, this is going to sound like a stupid statement, but one win is a win for me. Oh yeah, <laughs> just a, just a big win. Um, uh, yeah. If you if you could steal any of those, yeah, that's you're walking away pretty happy. Put um, on the dog mask then. <laughs> you might you might as well bring out They'll the mask. Out. They will I, be out. Yeah. Dust them off. Get them out of the basement. Out of Lane Johnson's <laughs> basement, along with Jackson. Get them out of there and uh, <laughs> just bring them up. Dust them off. Dogs got to get out in the yard. It is. Kinda, right, it is kind of crazy how how like how different our schedule is. Like first half to second half. Like it's so much easier. And I'm looking at. It yeah. I mean, that. so you're looking at it. Like and you slide. go to week ten. You go to week 10, and you're hoping Denver doesn't pick up Aaron Rodgers at that point <laughs> yeah. because they're, they're the biggest <laughs> prospect for him right now. They, because they'd be so good after hopefully that. they pick him up. If, they wouldn't pick him up that, that late. That's the thing. They, they would, would have to pick him up beforehand. Early in the deadline. season. If, if not, yeah, exactly. Well, yeah, good point. So we would play him. So that, that'll shift that to an L, possibly. <laughs> but yeah. if we're looking at the rest, I mean, Saints, no breeze. No faith in Taysom Hill and no faith in... Somebody call his name out there. I'm James, blanking. James Winston. James, James Winston. I love James Winston, um, dude. I have faith in James, dude. James yeah. is an absolute stud. He's Mr. Genius. 40 and 40? Dude, 30 and 30, but yeah. yeah. Dude, I, I gave him 10 more touchdowns. I, dude, 10 he, more. James, he had, James will throw picks, but he'll put up points. <laughs> dude, wait, with, uh, what's his name? He just, he just chucks him up there. Well, then I guess them. it depends on how good the Saints defense is going to be this year. And they probably should be good. I mean, they were, they're they were great last year. Good. Yeah. They're, they've been so. good as of late. We could so, win that game. So I think those are two wins. I think those are two wins. So if you're going from week seven to week... I mean, that'll be a shootout game for sure. If you're going 7-11, um, then it's it's two wins and a loss. That's a That's a 4-1 streak where you can gain some momentum. I think you then lose at the Giants... The Giants are weird. I think we just, I think we either split or lose both to them, actually. But I don't think the Giants really? are, are a good yeah, team. Weird. Yeah, I, I, their their defense is looking great. I mean, they just signed Leonard, Leonard Williams. They get a Dory Jackson. Uh, you pick up a ton of receivers. Um, the one guy oh holding back is the quarterback, um, it, which if is just a bad, shame. Then that it just, Daniel Jones is bad. Yeah, no, they're, I, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. I think there is, if Daniel Jones plays like, you're putting a lot of money on him being good, I though. Be, I think they'll do the division. You put a, can you put a lot of money on that, though? 
No, I don't think I can. But I'm saying yeah. he, he doesn't have to be a star. I'm not starter, putting a house on that. Yeah, I think if he's decent, then he they win the division. I guess it depends on if our I the mean, most that's gonna, team that right now. game is going to be a battle in the trenches. If our uh, D line is still up and running, our trenches are at solid. full capacity at that point in the season. Because by week twelve, if they're they're usually like you know knees are getting blown out by that point in the season for us, unfortunately. Yeah, exactly. And but I don't think the Giants are worried because okay, week twelve, Saquon's hurt, no doubt. Uh, <laughs> Dan, Daniel Dan, Daniel Jones is coming in. He's like. I don't need Saquon. I'm going to run 96 yards anyway. Uh, break up the space. Um, so, so, week 13, 15, right, guys? Jets football team. Um, Jets make some good pickups. I like what they're doing a lot. I just don't think they're yet, there yet. I think we still get the win. I think we take a win from the football team. Jets pick up guys like Corey Davis. They obviously have obviously have Wilson coming in now as their guy, with without a doubt. Um, and, you know, just a lot of pickups there that are going to bolster that team up over the next few years to come. Um, but I still think those are quick wins. I think, you know, the Jets aren't there yet, right? They were one in 15 team and they messed it up on getting Lawrence. So I think they'll find a way to mess it up again. Give the birds a win. I, uh, always the I agree with that. And here's a fun fact. The Eagles have literally never lost to the Jets in NFL history. We never have. In history? <laughs> yeah, in NFL history. Even preseason. Yep. There's a lot to there's a lot to bank on there. Holy Literally shit! Literally never. So just hammer that game for the Eagles. <laughs> whatever. <laughs> whatever. Put whatever. it now in the coffin. The I want to see a W. Um, take it. Yeah, take the it. money. You never lose to him. Never a loss. Um, Washington football team. Fitzpatrick, right? Curtis Samuel, Terry McLaren, McLaren, um, Antonio Gibson. So guys Fitz... that are just doing work. Dude, but I still I think McKissick, we dude. split. McKissick Fitzpatrick is involved. always streaky, though. So he, some, he, I feel like he usually starts his years off really hot, but then by the end of the year, he's, uh, yeah. you know, he's sucking. Also, all those players you said, I think we potentially have better versions of. Like McLaurin <laughs> is good. McLaurin is good, but I think Smith will be better. Well, okay, Smith is a tier above McLaurin, but McLaurin is is pretty good. He's pretty. Yeah, I know whoa, McLaurin's whoa, whoa. good. Okay. He, he's I, a one. He is a one. If Devontae will, Smith I, is good as Tyler McLaurin in his first year, I'd be very happy with that. Yeah, I'd be very happy. Oh yeah, <laughs> in his first year, Jackson, I want to be eventually right, be better. Trevon and and I, I agree. I think he can. I think he can be that at least. I think he can be For better. Sure. I hopefully he is better. I, but I'm saying in his rookie year, if he's good as McLaurin, then I'll be happy. So well, going to week 16, the Giants. I think I have this written down as W slash L again. I. I'm so iffy on the Giants. I feel like they're, like Britt said, games in the trenches. You have Miracle at the Meadowlands. You have weird, wonky things where Daniel Jones is running for 100 yards more than Saquon should be. Uh, um, so I think these could be three L's towards the end. Um, can and, I just point really? out? Yeah. The people making our schedule, were they like halfway, were they like three quarters of the way done our schedule? And they're like, wait, we have to like, the division games. No, it's actually just how it is now. No, <laughs> no I think, yeah, that's so. like, that's planned out. On purpose. Yeah. To, it's, to it, it, the game it's, at the end of the season. It's planned like, purposely because you're running towards the playoff implications of everything, especially at the division. Make, they might have to be more like, important. And yeah. they're like, they're like, it's not the NFC beast anymore. It's the NFC least. So these guys are always competing with the difference of one game, you know, four <laughs> and 12 at that point. By, so it's like. By that time, yeah. it's just going to be like the only thing that matters is like us battling against each other because we have no other implications of making a playoff spot besides <laughs> besides be, like winning the besides East. each other. Yeah. I mean, besides not each according other. to such a toss up at that point. Uh, prediction, we'll be making the playoffs. No, I don't think nine wins will well, be enough to get a wildcard uh, spot. I right? mean, Caputi just said Caputi agreed with me. That I he think they're I think be, they're uh, all the same type of records between the teams because they all have they're all coming from like twelve to eleven lost seasons. I mean. Well, what, you know, 10, 12 What I'm losses. saying is nine wins won't be enough to – it might be enough to win a division, but if, if somebody has more than that, it won't be enough to win – get a wild card spot. Oh, definitely no, not. I would agree with that. Okay, I'm just yeah. making sure you guys are on the same page. Um, but, yeah, they got to find a way to make these last games interesting. Exactly. Somehow. That's what I'm saying. Because we only yeah. – it's us against us. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, it just makes it more intense, especially if you're fighting over a position yeah, within the that's division. That's how it was last year. Yeah. More intense, more money for the NFL markets. You know, that's They're exactly what the they ratings. want. Get those so an, an extra game, an extra game of ratings, media, advertisements. It's all about the money, boys. Um, 
But yeah, I mean, I don't know. I think it's always Money a toss up. Money boys. <laughs> I like that you said that. Um, so I don't know. I mean, it's it's kind of like the thing. Like past couple of years, like the last game usually doesn't matter. In the, well, in last year's case, it it did. But you know, sometimes you play the Cowboys or you know Giants last, and it's like, all right, they're already out of the running. So it it might come to that. It might not. Let's see if it's competitive. But um, yeah. Eagles nine and eight, plus minus one. All That's right, what I got. Everybody's, on the everybody's final, I like that. That's final number of wins. I'm going seven. Play. Okay. I'm going seven if everything goes according to plan. All right. Jackson. That's like seven, absolutely. Yeah. Originally, I was saying ten. Uh, looking back at the schedule now, I'm going to say eight to nine. Can okay. you give, give me one number? Nine. All right. Okay, so he's leaning. He's leaning on the up. Um. Yeah. I'll, I'll go eight. I'll go nine and eight. I'll go nine, nine and eight. Nine, eight. Okay. Final, right, final, like that. final answer. All right, so we got two sevens and two nines. Um, yeah, nothing, nothing crazy about the schedule timing wise. We have one Monday night, um, so you know, prime time game, one Thursday night game where we're home against the Bucks, and then we got a four day turnaround um, to get That's back to the Raiders. Um, it's gonna be rough. Or no, sorry. I think coming from, we have ten days in between week six to week seven. So we have extra days going to the Raiders. So that's another reason why I think that's a win and we get some momentum at that point. All right. A couple extra um, days for the strip club for the, for the get, game. The yeah. <laughs> don't, don't, uh, don't get too much ca- too, too caught into the, uh, the partying. Devontae Smith won't for sure. But All right, let's look at the rival schedules and this how – This is a good stat. This is a here. great, a great this breakdown. Is. Before we get on to um, that, um, let us know what you guys think down below. Uh, let us know in the comments yeah. what you guys think. Give us your own submissions. The prediction is going to be number of wins, uh, number of wins of our opponents, or how you guys think we're going to split the division up. So, Give us like I said, even even with our worst answer, or you know, worst record coming from Flay and Brits of seven, I'm still happy with that. So, yeah. that's not necessarily free, a bad free win thing. improvement. Yeah, I'd say in the comments, give us number of wins and who's going to win the division. Yep. All right, boys. Yeah, so we're looking at the rival schedules, right? And so these are the teams that we don't share games with in our division. So we're looking at the Birds. Just quick explanation. They get the Niners, Lions, Jets. Cowboys get the Cardinals, Vikings, Pats, and so on and so forth. Um, looking at this just right off the bat, man, the football team got absolutely <laughs> just they got screwed. screwed with this. They I mean – Seahawks, Packers, Bills, all top contending teams that are probably going to be in the playoffs if everything goes according to plan. So I think they're screwed. I think that in, I think that's an easy 0-3 for them. Yeah. For those three games. I'd be surprised if they win any of those games. Unless Rodgers is out of Green Bay. So do you guys agree with me that the Birds have the easiest – I mean, three got, games here. I mean, the Patriots got better, so the Cowboys, like, that's going to be a tough game to them. Um, yeah, I think, yeah. Are the worst team out of those three, and then Cardinals, I think, are going to be really good this year. Giants Vikings are interesting. Easy, but I think it could be difficult. I don't. I think the Giants lose yeah. definitely to the Rams and definitely to the Dolphins. Do you care to elaborate? The Bears could be really good. Yeah, Justin Fields, that's your guy. Justin Fields, but I don't think they're quite there yet, but I still give the Giants two losses on that. So I I mean the I Rams think... gonna have Stafford now? Yeah, Rams got Stafford. That's what I'm saying. The Rams are gonna be a their Super Bowl favorite, I'd say. Yeah, I so I think Or one of the Super Bowl uh, favorites. Between the Giants and Cowboys, I don't know who has the easier three games there, but I think the Cowboys go two and one. I think they take a game from the Patriots at least, because I don't think the Pats are quite there yet. I think the Giants go one and two there. I think they lose to probably the Bears and the Rams. You think they beat the Dolphins? I don't know, dude. It's Dolphins. Well, the only thing the question mark is there is two those are three, three amazing defenses right there. You're you're right, but it's the, those the are Bears. three intense defenses. Maybe the three best my, defenses in the NFL. I don't even know what I would say is the worst <laughs> yeah, defense. Kind of kind of hard to say. That's a tough. So yeah, I, I'd say Cowboys two and one out of those three, and one two Giants. Really? I would say... You think the Cowboys, Cowboys are going to win two of those games? I think so. I think... I just yeah, don't I, think I the pa- Patriots are there yet. I think... I think you can't count out the Patriots, man. I think they made a... They made so you can never moves. count out the Patriots. 
the Especially brain. just. <laughs> Why did you say it like that? Just pull up their pants. <laughs> the pants oh my god. Uh, you can't count them out. No, they made so many moves too. They yeah. they signed like a million people. They make a they, lot of money. They got Mackie Jones, Big Mac. Big Big Mac Jones. I, the only time, everything time I think of that guy, I'm just gonna think of him walking down. To, to, on the you're draft, you're welcome. You're welcome, day, you're welcome for that joke, dude. You're welcome for that joke. It just so looks so ridiculous. Oh my uh, god. But no, I think I'm least... going. Go ahead, Jackson. <laughs> I was just gonna say I'm going Cowboys. I think they'll go two and one. I think they'll probably lose the Cardinals. Um, Giants, yeah, okay. honestly, one and two or zero oh and three. I don't think. I don't. They have a good chance of beating anybody if they can beat one anybody. And two it's probably best. the Bears. Yeah, I agree with that. I think that's. What, I think that's. Washington, Washington football team. I'm saying zero yeah. oh and three potentially. Yeah, I mean, this is the slide I, I, where I'm not even potentially. I'm talking that, that up as zero oh and three. It's going to be a low win division again. Yeah, I mean, zero oh and three for the or for Washington Giants. I, Probably 0 and 3, depending on Chicago's offense. Um, Cowboys, I'm going 1 and 2. I think they probably beat the Vikings, but they lose to the Cardinals and the Pats. And then I think we go 2 and 1. I'm saying all three teams lose all three of these games. That is possible. It's so possible, honestly. Cowboys, Giants, football team? You're saying? Yeah. I say I say, they're all losing. All three of them are losing all so, three of these games. So, so guys, so Brits and Flay, you put you put the birds at seven wins, and you don't think nine is going to get the playoffs. Yet you're saying said, zero and three I for this. So that's that's kind of helpful. I said gonna, nine. They haven't gone in But these are the I, three yeah, hardest teams. So you're looking teams at this. This changes your mind a little bit. I said but, nine but, is going to get to the playoffs. Birds seventeen and zero. <laughs> that's right, baby. I said seven <laughs> wins. <laughs> Yeah, you did say seven, but I mean, looking at this, doesn't it give you a little bit better of a feeling? No, because someone's going to make going against the division games. Yeah, I, I mean, mean, the Giants might still. pull one off against Chicago. I don't see and, and Miami. I don't see them winning against LA though. I'll give them two and one. Still, Cowboys a three game won. difference helps a lot. Cowboys, I think they would lose to the Cardinals. I bet Cowboys probably could go zero and three, and the Washington football team could also go zero and three in these in these three games. But I think the Cowboys would probably pull one off. I can't put my finger on one though. Consensus on the on the birds then, two two and, two and one, one at the least. I'm I'm saying three and oh, two and one in the least around. Two, okay. yeah, I would say it's, two it's, and one. Two and one loss to the 49ers. It's a hundred percent loss to the 49ers. There's no way we beat them. I'm not going hundred percent. If they're healthy like they were, like like two years ago, you're not you're not winning me over on that one. All right, I, I do want to do some additional predictions. I think these are going to be fun. I wrote these up today. Um, right. Not not on teams, on players for the birds. So right. let's let's do like a little this. run through before we get to the week one of the schedule. Jalen Hurts, over under 4,000 passing yards. Let me give you the breakdown of stats for four games. 1,000 yards, 1,060 yards in four games, so 250 yards per game. So that's putting him. Is that passing or total yards? That's that's passing yards. So that's putting him at about you know that four thousand mark. So over under Jalen Hurts, does he step up, throw over four, or does he hit under the mark for the four thousand? I think whether it's Jalen Hurts or whether it's Joe Flacco, I know it's going to be Jalen Hurts. <laughs> oh uh, God, it's going to be because <laughs> he was averaging two fifty, like you said. And our, our offense is much better. We have a better line. We have better receivers. We have uh, our tight ends are back. I think Ertz is going to have a better season than he had last year. Ertz is smirking. I, no, I'm just. You don't think, think over four thousand? No, I'm just thinking. I don't know. I'm not sure. Okay. Well, I think it's easily over four thousand. Maybe forty two hundred. I say four thousand, and I go over just because me and Brits were talking about this earlier. I think it's. I think that's an easier accomplishment to get in today's NFL than yeah, most. That's people. why. That's why I'm thinking. Like he, I think he. I'd, I'd lean towards yes, like over 4,000. Because you got to remember Carson we're Wentz. Be playing a lot of shootouts. Carson went over the 4,000 with the scrubs on the team. Yeah. Um, we have Devontae <laughs> yeah. Smith. I think Jalen's gonna Jalen Rager is gonna step up, and I think we got some other weapons in there in Miles Sanders, Gainwell. That is, you know, the newest addition, and it's gonna help. I think out. the I think the O line stays healthy this year. That's what I'm banking on. That's a big thing to to try to hold on to, but I think he does go over the 4,000. I would, I would, I'm going to say yes, but I think it's going to be right on the line. I think it could come right up just short of it. Take or, it. I'll take or, that. 
give me Colossus. I think he's, but like, uh, you know, I think he's gonna have to use his legs a decent amount too, just because I think with a young and experienced quarterback, and I think it was definitely something you saw last year. Is you know he's quick to take off if he doesn't see a look he doesn't like, you know, he's not gonna force anything. He, he's gonna take off. I hope he doesn't take off. As oh, much four thousand total year, yards. Though. Oh, oh no! Yeah, exactly. four four thousand total. That yeah, won't it was be four thousand total. That's not a problem. Yeah, hundred percent. Four thousand pass. He'll come up right, right up, right up, right up on that. I'll say over yeah. just because I want to root for him. Yeah, I want him to do good. I want yeah, him to start over. I'll say it's close, but it's over. <clears throat> yeah, I think and the I, fact I, that we're going to be playing so many shootouts is really going to help him shoot, like get the four thousand yards. Because a lot of games we're going to be down. He's going to be bombing it. Going to help him shoot his shot. Yeah. No, I, I'm going to go back to something Britt said from episode one. Um, I don't want him to run as the first option. I still want him to run because that plays to his strength. And if he needs it as a as a last worst case scenario, go take it forty yards for the run. But I want him to read his progression a lot more this year and not. Sort of yeah, uh, that. I mean, yeah, that, that's like the project or the progression of a quarterback. You know, you want him to start making those reads more and more. But I think with our line, I don't think we're a surefire thing to be healthy again this year. And with stuff like that, that's always going to make him have to use his legs more. The thing I want to know, and I'm not going to expand upon it because I just saw it in a post and nothing, really nothing else. Um, Dougie P kind of coming back from uh, retirement to say, not retirement, but he just came to the media. He's and on said vacation. Something. I don't know. He was on vacation, whatever. He's doing, media, he's doing media speaks no, no. on his vacation? I don't know. Don't look too much into it. Rumor uh, that Dougie P said that Jalen – his hand or his arm was hurt last year in the last four games. Something funky was going on where he wasn't 100% with his throwing arm. So I don't know. I don't know if that's anything fancy to talk about. Maybe we we'll dig into it next week. But um, something to note. Something of uh, interest. All right, let's go back to the let's go to the running backs. Uh, we th- we know Miles is the guy 100% through and through. Uh, we know he's more of a one, and you know. First, second ta- down kind, kind of guy's not exactly a Camara where he's all three downs running every, you know, every handoff and also receiving every catch. But he is, um, you know, he is the number one guy. Uh, looking at his stats, 2019, 16 games, uh, started about 11 of those games, 818 yards, three touchdowns, about an average of four and a half yards per carry. 2020 looking at last year knowing that he was hurt for a good quarter of the year 11 games played 860 yards six touchdowns and a whopping 5.3 yard per carry does miles sanders go over the thousand yard rushing feet i say yes because he stays healthy i think it's a definite yes if he's healthy if he's not maybe it's another 800 yards I think he's going to hit over a thousand yards if he's healthy and he plays all those games. I think the thing that might hinder him is the fact that Sirianni came from the Colts. And I know the Colts use their running backs in a way similar to the way we used them last year, where there's no real bell cow back. And that could play against Miles Sanders. See, yes. I, I'm going to, that's my take, Jackson. I don't, I don't think our backfield for the last couple of years has ever been a one guy show. So it never I, has. Yeah, and I think with again with Gainwell coming in, I think he's gonna he's gonna actually kind of uh take some people by surprise. Well, still though, with seventeen games, he only really needs like six like sixty seventy yards a game, right? You got You got to think extra game, and he got eight hundred and sixty yards in those eleven games, so he's gonna get that in three or four more games, and that's with the team not having a bell cow uh, running back. So yes, he. We don't give Miles Sanders the show that he deserves, but he does steal the show. So, I mean, I think he goes over. Only thing barring is the health question mark. Yeah, I mean, I'm, and you I'm, could I'm, argue that the Colts never had that bell cow back that was as good as Miles Sanders, which is maybe why they never used somebody. Well, like you can that. make that argument now with Jonathan Taylor. Yeah, they have. They, they do true. have that now. Well, I mean, what I was going to say before, is like, though. a little bit like about what Jackson said is like they use their running backs like they use the Heem Hines. They used um. I can't remember the other guy's name. They had a third Hawkins. guy. Okay, yeah, whatever his name was. Marlon but... Mack. Well, Marlon no, Mack, too. Year, though, right? He was hurt last year. Yeah, they had he was three, in the I, they, I know they had three guys that they were pretty much using like consistently every game. 
and they do. And Jonathan Taylor still went over a thousand yards. So I have, right. I, I actually have high hopes for Sirianni to to influence or implement the run game a lot more than Doug did. Obviously, it's like almost impossible not to. Um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but but uh, yeah. I, I think he like was Miles it Doug Taylor, though? I don't know. That's a different question. Uh, well, I probably Doug. Um, it's definitely I think, Doug. <laughs> I think I think Miles definitely goes over a thousand this year. Obviously, this is on like I'm only going on pure like 17 games. He's healthy all the games. Um, I think 100 percent goes over a thousand yards. There's no he's a talented running back. Like there's no reason why he shouldn't. It's not like a super amazing feat to go over a thousand yards. Like I feel like if you are a primary back on a team, you should be doing that. And you're like obviously as talented as Miles Sanders is. So I think yeah, 100 percent. I kind of disagree there. I think if you're hitting thousand yards. Well, I mean, thousand yards is honestly like obviously like hard, but. Like the extra game and like as talented as Miles. Well, is. right. This year is a little bit of a one-off. It's a little bit different. Yeah. I'll give you that much. Like the... I think we should hope for like 1,400, 1,600 yards for Miles Sanders. <laughs> That's. I think it could hit with our healthy though. line. No, I mean, if... do I think I mean, it could be twelve hundred yards? Listen, listen, you're looking if at he was an yards down per game. Back, uh, probably. Not, not even Flay. I think if you look at his yards per carry, yards per game, he's at a rate where he would go to fourteen. You know. Potentially fourteen hundred. I mean, he's, he's there. He's, it's just the health question. He's drastically underrated by the NFL. And that's why I say, I mean, five, five. I mean, yeah, five and five point three yards per carry. I mean, he's stuff had how many, how many seventy plus yards, carry, hard, like like touchdowns and stuff like that. Like this guy can must, break must free. have been at least at least six, at like, least. He can break, and with with, with that demolished O line we had, that's crazy. Right, we had nothing there. <laughs> All right, let's go to the passing game with our receivers. Not one person, but is any receiver going to go over a thousand yards? I know my answer. My T-shirt shipped. It should be here any day now. If you know what T-shirt I'm talking about, um, any receiver over a thousand yards? Yes. Do you think they will? I think Devonte Smith. I think Devonte Smith. I think that's your answer. Yards? Yeah. I I think he gets it. I really do. I don't think that's so. how much I faith I have in him. Tough. A rookie receiver, they rarely have success Very in the NFL. I think that. Rager could. Uh, a rookie uh, receiver that's going to be the number one receiver, though. How often does that happen? I, I don't think anybody does. I think they're all going to. I think. I think. I'd say I put Devonte at like eight hundred ish. Maybe I have. Okay. Maybe like I Rager, Justin. Yeah. Rager I around like seven hundred ish, maybe, and then. I think Rager is a eight hundred yard guy for a full season. What? I think Devonte Smith is. Going to be a thousand. I think he's immediate impact, and I think I have Justin Jefferson recency bias uh, with his fourteen hundred yards. But with that said, I think Devonte Smith can get there, knowing that he should get the most receptions for this team, no doubt in my mind. You know, he's definitely going to get the say, most looks. I'm going to say eight hundred for both Devonte and um, and Jalen Rager, and then I'm going to go thousand for Fogle. That's great. Oh, Wild that's, take. that's a big prediction. <laughs> Wild take. Thousand. For that's Fogel. a hot take. That's a hot. Oh, you take. want to hear a hotter take? That I, I was gonna say the 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 most chance for someone to get a thousand yards this year, Dallas Goddard. That's well, I'll get to that. Possible. I know I'll he's not a receiver. <laughs> I know he's not a receiver, but if he doesn't I'll, get hurt, I'll, I'll get I'll get I'll get to that one. Um, no, I just I think I so let let me put it this way. I think any receiver that's going to be good and eventually get to the thousand yard marks and like have thousand yard seasons consistently. I think most of those rookies start off at 800 yards yeah. in their rookie season. Um, you know, C.D. Lamb, like in the 800 range. Um, Ruggs didn't really pan out, but I don't know um, his yard stats. Judy, I don't know either. But a lot of the good receivers start out at 800 in their rookie season. I just think Devontae Smith's that good where he'll go and exceed expectations even in his rookie year. I th- no, I, I think he'll be have a fantastic season, and I think 800 yards is a fantastic season for a receiver. That's great. That's all I can ask. It is. He, he I mean, that. maybe maybe you bump that up to once again like 900 because of the the um because, extra game. Yeah. But I mean, which is it's so weird now that we have an extra game. It's gonna excuse. Yeah, the stats I'm not so even much. thinking that into the mix. Yeah, it's like uh, so. It's, you you yeah. gotta keep that in the back of your head. Um, yeah. But that actually, I didn't want to sidetrack us too much, but since we got some new rookies coming in this season with that, like new rule change do you think there's going to be an asterisk over any new hall of famers coming out of like this next generation because they have a one extra game for the entirety of their career They're which could give the... you a, it could so... give you all, you know over a 17 
year career, which is, you know, not everyone goes Next that season. long. That's a whole extra season. Well, you have to, th- they have to think, the whole theme, I'm pretty sure, goes by games played. So I don't think it's necessarily going to affect it in the grand scheme of things. Because, I mean, way back in the day, well, they had a 14-game yeah. season way back, right? I think. I mean, I'm sure they added games yeah. over the season. I couldn't tell you the I history mean, real, of how it's I changed mean, real, over time. Realistically, it's all relative to the time period. It's yeah. it's all rel yeah, but at the same time, like you, all the titles that you get MVP, it's you know, gonna, week by week. I mean, it's, it's gonna, pro balls. It's gonna. I don't destroy. think it's gonna affect. Uh, I don't think it's gonna affect Hall of Fame seasons. But then when you compare like single season stats, I, was I just think about that's what. That. Yeah, that could that could like Mahomes might like abolish like demolish the. I'll, like, I'll tell you. The I'll tell you right now. Yards thing like he might get like fifty seven hundred yards or something. I'll tell you. Like, yeah, I'll tell you right now. <laughs> records will be broken. Like, oh yeah, it's gonna be much easier Mahomes, to break it. And, and not not in a very long time span either. I would say in the next like five years, I'd like say major records should be broken. Next five years, Mahomes shatters. We're the probably going to see. Record. We're probably going to yeah. see Brady break the single yeah, season no passing doubt. record probably like this year. Just Brady he wants to possibly. Just Dude, it's Brady. He did you know, yeah, I mean, he did have a lot. It's, it's literally, it's literally going to be. Uh, okay, there's a new record I can break. I'm gonna go do it because I'm Tom Brady. That's like I mean, I really don't like I, him as a as a player or guy too much, but you know, he just he just does shit like that. I can't. Other believe. other yeah, other than um, Brady just going to the box to say like, hey, I can do it without Bill Belichick. I think he also uh, did it just for the fact he could say he beat every team in the NFL, <laughs> um, just to get like the last <laughs> yeah. rec- get the last record. That he is 100 percent. He point. would something he would do. There's something something he would Brady have, would do. have in the back of his mind. All right, so He's Britt like, said it. Go ahead, Jackson. I was gonna say he's like I can't, can't go to a team that I haven't already beaten. So it's gotta be the Bucks. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He, he's just I think he has this mindset of just like he he just has like a personal vendetta against like everybody he's playing against at the time of him playing them. <laughs> <laughs> but go ahead, Kabuti. What were you saying? So Brits brought it up. Who's hurting more for receptions? Is it <clears throat> Ertz? Or do we praise the God Himself, Dallas Goddard, on getting things like thousand yard receiving? Where are you uh, saying season? that Hurts, Hurts will be? That's here? not. Yeah, yeah, I think he's going to stay at this point. I don't know how they get rid of him. We're gonna who's going to have I more? Think, we're going to come. I think, I think more, so. trade it before the stay. deadline. I think that Hurts is going to stay, but I don't think that I have a lot of confidence in Dallas Goddard, despite how good he is, staying healthy for a whole season. I feel like he's always hurting his ankle or just like a weird injury that takes him out for a couple games. And I don't know if that'll let him like fully achieve Stay in a thousand yard season. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Taking into account injuries is like always. Well, like, I'm not. So, all right. So for the, the question here on this one, isn't thousand yards. It's who's going to get more receptions just to be clear. Oh, okay. no, Dallas Goddard. I would say. Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah. hundred okay. percent. I, I think here's yeah. my, my take on the whole urge thing. I personally don't think he'll be here, but if he is here, um, I think he's going to be a little pissed off about it because he. I feel like if the way that we should have handled this is that we should have cut him months ago so he had a better chance at free agency. Now teams have no money left to pay him. So it's like we kind of screwed him. So I think We're kind of so doing think, a disservice to him. Exactly. So yeah. I think if he's here, he's not going to be all in. He's probably gonna. He's gonna be our second receive or second tight end, obviously. And I think he's not gonna do like put in as much work as he would if he was on another team. I disagree. I think that Ertz is the kind of guy who plays for like the fans, and I think he likes Philadelphia so much that he wouldn't want to tarnish his reputation. And, and, and Bruce, you you can't not play. Remember, your value is how good you are. So if you don't play, you just continue to lose value, and that also is the money that you'll be potentially making in the future. I yeah. I mean, you're right. It's just I don't know, man. I just think we 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 screwed him, and and I don't think he's very happy with the organization yeah. right now. I don't I, I don't think we I don't think we did right by him. As but much um, as, I, I, as much as I think Zachary is a great guy and he would play for the fans, I think it's going to be really hard for him to put his all into this season. You know? Yeah, I don't I don't think his heart was in it even last year. So I yeah I I think that showed last year for sure. I mean, he was so hurt. nobody's heart was in it last. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, yeah. I mean, by the end of it, well, yeah, everyone gave it gave up. How yeah. could you when the guy leading you doesn't have the heart to give? Carson, um, yeah, it was a fucking dead fish. <laughs> um, dead fish. <laughs> he was flopping. All right, let's turn it over to the defensive side now. A guy we all know and love, Brandon Graham. Does he get over or under the eight sacks that he had last year? 
He's not a sack guy. He's a QB pressure guy, so I don't know. I, it's a tough I, one. I, I'm gonna First Pro Bowl last year. I'm going to say under. Oh, get yeah, six. I, just because he's getting older. Five. He's getting older. I think you got Josh Sweat rotating with Barnett on the other side. You bring in Ryan Kerrigan, so it's kind of a full loaded rotation. Um, Finally again. I, I, don't, I don't need him to get eight sacks. I just need him to change the game. And whatever that means, whether it's a pressure causing a sack or a fumble or anything else, I just want him to be a, still be a game changer. I don't really need a stat from him, a stat line. I just I need think, him to be doing BG type things. I think that the op, or that the defensive line is overall more stacked than it was last year, so he might not have as much of an impact. But I think overall he'll play good, and the, the line will be better than they were last year. I think they have to be right. I mean, Milton Williams coming in, just a lot of people helping out there on the tier, interior line. So yeah, I, mean, um, yeah. I, I think I'm going to go under on that, obviously, but. Uh, He's gonna be a good player. He's always a good player. Like he's gonna have a, a. He's gonna take effect of the game. You you know you like the guy when it could be under eight sacks or even five yeah. sacks. He could be at the five sack level, and you're just like, all right, yeah. You never you he's never still, come out of a game. You never come out of a game and be like, man, Brandon Graham sucked that game. Like you know, like you, you don't. Yeah. You really you really never walk away saying that. All right, so that's a guy uh, who does 100 percent every play. Yeah, 100 percent. 100. Another guy. 100 percent. Another guy that I think gives 100 percent. Big play. <laughs> Over under on two picks for the season. Had one last year with the Birds, 20 picks across eight years in his NFL career, which gives him uh, about a, a two and a half average. Uh, so we're we're going to go over under on two interceptions from big play slay. Over. I'm gonna go I'll take over. the over on that. I'm going to go over. He's going to have a better year. I think the defensive, uh, the new defensive staff is going to be like way better, way more aggressive, I think. Um, I think we're going to get more pressure on the quarterback this year with our, with our D line if they you know stay healthy. Yep. I think that's the answer. I think I think over. I Big think the slide. fact that our defensive, I think the fact that our defensive coordinator used to be a uh, defensive backs coach, and is um, probably going to put more emphasis on the defensive backs. And I think we have uh, overall more help over top with the, the addition of Harris. I think that Anthony both of could help him get uh, more picks. I don't have a ton of us. Uh, um, confidence in the like the defensive ends that or defensive backs as a whole but i think uh, slay has a better year much better year i would i would agree i think the turn, turnovers is what we need that's what we want back we from lacked. 2017 that's what we, lacked, what last we year. lacked seriously in the past three years so we need to get it back from him he had one year where we where he had eight picks um we're not saying he's going to get returned to that kind of one year slay. he had eight picks in one year um it's crazy Holy to think shit. about corners having that <laughs> that's insane um but the rest were were one to two and uh the other max was three so crazy one one crazy year um you know he, he's a guy who makes plays and he he's he just covers really well just don't put him on Metcalf. um how many years but, removed from the that uh the eight pick season is he so if we're taking a look at how far ago that was it, it almost feels like the 2004 days when guys actually did this a lot. It, it felt like. Oh my gosh, yeah. Um, but we have to go back to... That was three years ago, 2017. 2017. Okay. Yep. So if he, if Slay could three return seasons, to his yeah. 2017 self, maybe he can return the Eagles to... To their 2017 team. Yeah. So that's uh, like that. that's a that's a wild stat eight eight interceptions and, it, and it's a while ago. So all right, so with that last uh, last prediction, let's turn it over to week one, boys. Let's get into more details on why we think we're losing <laughs> to uh, <laughs> to the Falcons here. So uh, he, <laughs> hard hard comparison, hard hard picture to look at, but it, it is kind of funny because I still think. Smith is going to put up some great numbers. I think he's going to produce. Um, Pitts picture. just looks absolutely rip, ripped in this one. Um, but if, if you watch the video of him running this route, it looks a lot better than the after picture just looking at his size. Um, he looks like he's a like PB football player in this picture. <laughs> Which doesn't it doesn't it make it's it funny because I know I know the I know exactly what you're talking about like the big helmet small the body huge helmet and his legs dude his legs look like twigs yeah but it just looks like one of us went on the football field and we're like we're playing now that's, that's ridiculous it, it, 
It gives me hope a little it's, bit. It's, like, it's crazy that this guy I'll had like 1,700 yards last year in, in college football. I, I'll take what Hunter I can Renfro get. is a successful receiver, and he's probably smaller. No, I'm, I mean, I'm yeah. not, I, I think just the picture's funny, but I still, I know I still got faith in my... Uh, I don't know if we want to hear Hunter Renfro comparisons right now to our first round pick at 10. Um, but new coaching staff, new new coach, new defensive coordinator, new I, kind of a brand new offense in a way. You already had Ridley and Jones there, surefire guys that are just going to put up 1,000-yard seasons each, no doubt in my mind. Ridley's um, He's so good. O, O-line, they have three first round picks um, across the years, Not obviously not just this year. So their O-line, you know, should be pretty solid. Um, Mike Davis, the running back, coming over from Carolina, and Corderell uh, Patterson coming from the do Bears. They, so do they still have Gurley? Corderell. Yeah. They do have Gurley. How do you say his name? Who? Um, Patterson. But anyway, they don't have Gurley anymore. I think. Okay. Um, but Mike Davis, I, li- I like Mike Davis stuck up last good. year for an injured McCafferty. McCafferty. Um, <laughs> At this stage of their career, Mike Davis is sort of like a better Todd Gurley almost. Because Todd Gurley, with his knees, he just couldn't do anything. Yeah, he's like, yeah, he's not. Oh my god. Yeah. I mean, it's, not, it's, not really it's not funny. It's not savvy. funny. It's just crazy to have some arthritis as like a running back in the NFL. That's like, oh that sucks to the best running back in the league. I know. That's We talk it, we say it all the time on this pod. You know, it's short lived for running backs. Yeah. It sucks. But Arthur Smith at the coaching spot, he's coming over from Tennessee. So he's the guy known as uh, Mr. Revival of Ryan Tannehill. So was able to get that guy who I thought was completely done, put a, put a nail in the coffin type of quarterback. Um, you know, he actually gave that guy his career back. So does he do that with Matt Ryan, kind of give him a little bit of a re- revival? Well, well that, early that, that fresh start here. Do you think Ryan Tannehill's career was revived because of this coach, or do you think it was just a change of environment? Because he was playing on Miami when Miami sucked. Yeah, I mean, yeah, but I, I don't think Ryan Tannehill, the guy, was putting them any in any greater position to win. He wasn't. So, I, and and so I mean, so the offensive coordinator before Arthur Smith as well was Matt Lafour. So it, it wasn't just Arthur Smith; he had a hand in it. Um, how much he actually made an impact on Tannehill, I can't tell you, but it looks like it's, it's one of those things where it's like, are right, bringing a guy who can do it? Can he actually I do it? I, I, I mean, he has the right weapons too. So, I think we're looking. I think Matt Ryan can still do it. Yeah, I think we're looking. Too yeah, much into I think the he can still fling it because yeah. I think the offense is not the problem on the Falcons. No, the, not at were, all. They were really good. I think Matt Ryan's. This is gonna be really another. Good. This is gonna be a shootout game to start the season. Yeah, I mean, the, yeah. it. We, we're, gonna gonna, we're gonna have to abuse their defense because I'm not sure. Like I said, I'm not sure what they did after Pitts in the draft. I, I, they had to address defense, obviously. I'm, I'm sure they did. Um, but uh, unless they're like the Eagles. Unless. <laughs> well, we did. We just did the wrong spots. But I mean. Well, you, you say they need to. Game. You say they need to fix the defense. That's why they bring in a guy, uh, Dean Pease. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not. Dean Pease. Dean Pease. <laughs> I'm not name? laughing. I swear. <laughs> um, which Arthur Smith's bringing over from Tennessee? This 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 guy. Uh, ten out of twelve <laughs> seasons. It's a real person. Ten, ten out of twelve seasons in the NFL as a defensive coordinator, uh, and he his defensives have been top twelve in yards allowed. So, good defensive coordinator uh, with the Pats, been with the Ravens during their Super Bowl run. Um, was with the Titans most previously. He's retired twice, but seems to always come back to life. I don't know. Weird. Um, Keeps weird thing about that guy. His, uh, Keeps coming back. But, um, Brits, this is where I think you're wrong. I, yes, I think it's going to be a shootout with each offense. I don't think it's our offense that's going to win. I think it's got to be our our defense and our D-line specifically that could potentially win this game if, if we have a chance to win. So I think it's going to be a shootout offense from both teams. But then I think the defense, if they could get to Ryan and, you know, kind of throw him off his game, um, gonna, you know, we can let it, we can let our offense do the rest at that point. But I think our defensive line needs to step up if we want to consider even no, the possibility of a win coming out of my problem. Game. My problem with that game is that I think our defensive line will cause pressure. I think that our safeties are fine. So I think over top will be good. 
I think that we'll put Slay on Jones, so Jones will be semi-covered. But I think Ridley's just going to pop off, because who's going to cover Ridley on our defense? <laughs> yeah. That's gonna, gonna I mean, Pitts, Jones, Ridley. Um, yeah, we. I think we forget about Hayden Hurst because of, you know, Pitts at the fourth pick. So a, a guy who, like, stepped up his game immensely from last year. It's so gonna, who, if, a fumble. if, we, we if a fumble. Ryan... If Ryan throws the ball at all, somebody's catching it, and it's probably going to be more than 20 yards a catch. I mean, that's what it averages out to at this point. So, like, I think our defense has to win the game, throw him off. I think we need a couple picks in this game to just, you know, give the give the ball back to Jalen, make sure that we win the time of possession game because I think that's the only possible way we can actually take this game. We could be a – we need a Brandon Graham strips after or something. I was gonna say we need like a, yeah. we need a QB fumble. Super Bowl strip. Caputo, you think we're gonna have to do a lot of uh, game management in that sense? I think yeah, I think it's game management. Just make Jalen feel comfortable. You're working with a defense in the first game of the season where you can just you can end up tearing them up, but get comfortable in the pocket. Read your progressions. You know, try to be accurate on those throws. He needs to step it up from 52% from those past four games of last season. So I think what ends up happening, if we do win this game, it might be a Jalen come from behind win, uh, us tailing the Falcons. But I just wanted, what I want to see in this game, I'm, I'm pinning it as a loss. But what I want to see at the end of the day is it, you know, actually being a competitive game, not the Falcons putting up 40 points to zero against us. Um, us winning the time of possession, uh, and us getting some turnovers, trying to pressure Ryan into throwing some picks our this, way. This is so. a, yeah, like that's that's a good point. This is a game where Jalen has a lot of opportunity to like have a great game, you know, like have like a, a comfortable game where because they have a bad defense, you should be able to abuse this defense. Um, exactly, he should have a good stat line, and I think that'll make us happy, whether or lose. I do think we lose this game just because. Like you said, I it makes me terrified to say who who we're gonna put on Ridley. <laughs> like I have no idea. And then, if we go ahead. if we win the time of possession battle and really establish the run, I think potentially we could win. I think if we go into it as a shootout, we could that could lead to a loss. Yeah, time of possession is going to be a huge yeah. thing, which is why I think Flay was talking about with the game management. It's like that's going to be a huge factor. We have to dominate that to have a chance. Yeah, please exactly. take away any possible opportunity that Kyle Pitts could be catching the ball. I don't want that to happen. <laughs> yeah. So time of possession, opposite of Chip Kelly in it here. Uh, take the time to get the win. Yeah, that's going to be pretty much the, the name of the game there. Hold, like, so, keep the ball out of the offensive hands, their offense. 0 and 1 versus 1 and 0 for the season. It changes up your percentages a lot of going to playoffs. So if you're 0 and 1, about a 25% chance historically to get to the playoffs. If you're wow. 1 and 0, you can pretty much double that and make it a 50% chance. Um, obviously, it's it's not really what it means, but at the same time, um, you know, it could get you to a really good start just to try to take this win. It would be a steal of a win, and you would love to see it. Yeah, Especially I mean, with the start of our schedule. Yeah, who knows what happens if this team just gets hot early, just catches a, a, a little fire. So let's take it to week two, and that's where we finally come home to good old Philadelphia, where it's always sunny, and George Kittle's taking pictures of the better tight end, Gallus, Gallus Doddard. <laughs> uh Dallas Goddard. Um yeah, so obviously Kittle is gonna probably put up maybe two hundred yards on our defense. <laughs> um but with that said, what's gonna what's gonna be the thing to do if we wanna actually win this game? It's gonna be me arguing against you guys, so I'll let you guys kind of take the stand first. For me, this game is tough because I think a lot of their best players are the running backs and the tight ends. And I don't think we have any linebackers to really stop that. Yeah, I, it's gonna be it's gonna be really tough to hold Kittle. The good news is I don't think they don't have too many crazy weapons on at receiver, right? I don't think. I'm not sure. Who, oh my Debo god! Sam. Oh my god! Oh, Dude, yeah, Debo, you, cannot, like... you you cannot be more wrong. Um, this was the one thing where I was like, I looked at this and I was terrified. So they have Ayuk, Debo Samuel. Yeah. They just pick up Travis Benjamin from the Chargers. They also have. Wow. Mohamed Sanu, which, let's be honest, he's not anything special. He's got, he's That's at the tail end. Um, you had Richie James, which he popped off in like 200 and something yards, maybe like 250 yards and like two touchdowns that. for one game. So I'm not saying he's a starter or anything, but he he can do it. Um, and then you have Kittle at the tight end spot. So I mean, I'm terrified 
along with yeah. their running backs that are also receivers. I, I, I disagree. This I, is this is a uh, one of the well, like most well-rounded teams, honestly, as far as like just offense and defensively, very solid. You know, and you're well gonna have to, yeah, you're gonna have to play one of the best games of your season, like as well as you have to play the Bucks or the Chiefs to to squeeze one out here. I mean, I I still have this marked as an L. I I, yeah. I, I mean. Minus like Debo Samuel, I you you really think he's like a breakout player? I don't think he's a breakout player. I do, yeah, dude. If you year, watched him last year, last year and he played well. Played more than well, I think. Yeah. Yeah. So what wins this game? I think the Eagles win it. Um. So here, here's here's one here's <laughs> one stat. We win based off hype alone. <laughs> <laughs> don't believe the hype. Um. <laughs> no, but that's not it. So if we're looking at QB hits and what each team allowed. 49ers were the only team uh, to allow more than the Eagles. So they allow 83 QB hits last year. Eagles let up 80. Now, let me granted, 90% of those are Carson just wanting to get hit for some reason. Um, <laughs> just not throwing the fucking ball away. Um, so I think we stick to that. I think this is another defensive line thing causing turnovers early to get some momentum on offense and kind of I'm throw them off base. They were, they were dismantled last year by injury, bro. I don't. It's not gonna be the same. Honestly, though, <sighs> get get Cox in there early in the game, take out their QB, and, we'll, <laughs> and get the dub that way. Yeah, they what, they put in. Uh, Trey. Lance. I mean, they're, they're not put. I mean, they might go into the season putting in Trey Lance, if not over Jimmy Nate Sudfeld. That's your guy. <laughs> so and we're gonna have to so, take out Trey Lance and Jimmy J, dude. I just don't see how, like, I just don't have faith in Jimmy G. I, can't, I thought like, Jackson's San Fran was, uh, I thought Jimmy San Fran might been, like, also be in the uh, Aaron Rodgers sweepstakes as well. He, he did, but I don't know. I think he just, he dropped off from the face of the planet. I mean, he goes to the Super Bowl, and then the very next year, well, he he was hurt. So I, hey, he I don't know. Super Bowl and got hurt the next year. I know, I know. This could just be everybody was hurt last year. No, I, I don't know. This one is easily one I could be really swayed pretty easily just because they were all hurt. I think the teams amongst the teams that were the most hurt, like in the first four weeks of the season, I think it was the, the Niners and everybody and nobody else. Um, you had Kittle going Their down, both Bos- Bosa going down with the torn ACL. Um, so he's coming back. He's going to be terrifying. So I don't know. I, I might sway over to an L on this one, eight and nine on the season. As <laughs> so you've just completely... No, dude, it, I don't know how you can say this is going to be a win. The, the Niners are such a better team than they were last year. They're going to like they're going to go back to where they are, and it's going to be. Like, I mean, considering they get Nate Sudfeld and Nate Gary, you know, both of the guys coming oh. from the Birds, I don't oh, well, see how we can Nate say Gary, it's a win. It's a w. Yeah. <laughs> if they're starting Nate Gary, then Dallas Goddard might get a thousand yards in that one game alone. <laughs> <Yeah. alert, dude. laughs> Just all absolutely right. man. I think they're going to run all over us as well. I have to put that, take that, like oh, yeah. as well. They're gonna run all over us. But so, all right. So, not a win record-wise, but what's the win? What's the takeaway from the game that we're gonna say? All right, good game. Um, not not what we wanted to see on the record chart, but uh, you know, I like what I saw from. This, this will be, a... be our first test against don't a give real up. defense. Don't give up. I like that. Don't give up. And yeah, also like I think. Hertz might be running for his life this game. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, this is going to be our first very look good at possibility. Jay- this is going to be our first look at Jalen under some real pressure for this season. Yeah, so. I-, I think this this game will give us a good idea of how good our line is too. I really want to see um, yep. our ability to stop the 49ers defensive line and just see like uh, players like Jordan Mailata and whatnot like go against Bosa and whoever and see if they can really hold their own. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's it's going to be a huge test for that O line. Either way. I agree. All right, that is the Niners, my friends. Let's go to some key matchups on the season. Just looking back at the schedule again. So across the board, uh, is there anything that stands out to you guys that you want to talk about? I got some notes here listed. You know, jot it down. But what do you guys want to call out specifically? I feel like we mentioned um, most of this already, but like for, for me, I think it's going to be like the test against those teams that were like. Not as good as they were, are are better than they were last year. Like the Chargers and the Broncos, and even like 
even like the Giants and stuff like that, like the, the division uh, rivals, it's going to be those games where it's going to be like, are we, did we get better as well? As, like, even though we know they did, did we get better as well? And how do we match up against those teams? For me, the biggest matchup is against the Raiders. I think that our first six games are so difficult that we're more than likely going to come out with a very negative record. And I think that's the game where we decide whether we're going to, you know, put our balls to the wall and uh, make this a winning season or not. I like that. That's like a turning point. Uh, I'm actually inclined to agree with you, Jackson. Yeah, I think that if we can pull off that win there, and I think we're going to be expecting to win there. I think both the players and the fans, uh, you know, just everyone is going to be like expecting us to get the dub. Yeah, I, I mean, and that's the thing. That's like a turning point in the season because you get the 10 days of rest um, going into week seven. So you get the extra time. You get a lot of the Eagles fan base going to Las Vegas. So it's you can probably call that you know, kind of half a home game. Um, and then you go back to back with the Lions. Like I said, going to week nine will be tough. But then I think you pick up week 10 and week 11 again. So that's what, I, think, I think week seven and week nine are both huge games. I think that's where you make your run. My concern in this schedule, guys, is the week 14 bye. That is rough. Whereas you normally so could get that midseason. It's such a late time. And then you got four straight back to back games against the division. So that's the one probably the two biggest wonky things in the schedule where it's like, all right, you get that break, which, which is why I think you get that win in Washington or at home against Washington week 15, but it's just so tough playing those games week in and week out, um, you know, getting such a late buy and not getting your players back. Yeah. It's, it's, so. I, Go ahead, Jackson. I do think that that could be beneficial. I think that at that point we're going to need to win a lot of those games to make the playoffs and that, that, that bye week could really help rest us up for those games. It could throw us off. It could throw us off our momentum if we were just winning a game right before that, and then we take a bye, and then maybe lose some of those games. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. I mean, like yeah, like I mean, almost what, exactly what you said. It's it's tough to have that late of a bye, um, and before that is like a slightly easier part of the schedule, I guess. Kind of Jets, Giants, Saints is like an iffy one, um, but. I think it is beneficial. Usually the bye is that, like, you know, it rests you up. It gets you ready for, like, the rest of the season. And those four games are so important. It's kind of nice that it's before that four-game stretch against the division. But it's also just a killer that it's so late. Like, normally that would be, like, the end of the season. Like, like, like week 14. That's, like... Yeah. I mean, yeah. We're going to be tired. Last year? Right? Yeah. We're going to be tired. So, yeah. And, and that's... What's so hard about this is if they go one and five or two and four, they're dealing with an Eagles Philly fan base, man. And that's just so tough to have your confidence when you're shaken by our fan base. Like the only thing that would be hurting them at that point early in the season would be us the most. I'm worried Could you about imagine if they did so bad in LA, in Las Vegas that they were getting booed by the Eagles fans. It's <laughs> so possible yeah. though. I think the only thing that uh, helps us, um, like like, or helps the Eagles on a from the fan side, is I think, I think the majority of the fans are on the same page as us, where it's like this is going to be like yeah. a, a learning season and like a and a, a test season. So I think if we do go one and five, yes, we're going to have those instant reactions as Eagles fans that we suck. Oh my God, panic! Like we're, the organization sucks. But I think when people like settle down, they're like we're one and five. We played some good teams. I don't think there's going to be as much of an uproar as it would in like the past few seasons. I would agree. It all depends I, 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 how you yeah. play those games. I, I got to give Philly fans credit because when when Carson Wentz was on his downturn, we didn't give up on him. He gave up no. on us later on after he was benched one time, but we did not give up on him. I mean, we argued his case through and through 2018, 2019, 2020. We finally realized, all right, maybe this isn't the guy that we actually thought he was. And, Brits that's still what, that's, and you still got people like Brits arguing <laughs> and, and, you know, keeping his banner on the stadium that I drove past I, I will last say, week. I will say that I think so. Eagles, I think you're right with Eagles fans. I guess I think it was more of like a national media that gave up on Carson. Um, but I think I guess I, we did stick by him. I just think that the organization didn't do him well, more so than the fans did. Fans yeah, there's by him to a fault. Yeah, I, I think yeah. the fans just gave him a lot of credit where maybe it wasn't necessarily do so um okay so that's so 
maybe not key matchups, but I just kind of want to get your thoughts on one thing before we turn it over to the Sixers because we do need to talk Sixers. I mean, this is a big week. They get the first seed. Um, well, let's let's do talk Kerrigan. Um, you know, okay, now this is the wrong uh, wrong picture we got set up. So clearly, <laughs> uh, <laughs> clearly yeah, we we got some technical difficulties we need to sort out. Um, they look like they're like but, what the heck, dude. But like what the heck? We signed Ryan Kerrigan. Um, <laughs> Let's go so that, yeah, that, was, so, that was basically everyone in Philadelphia's reaction, except for us, because uh, you're truly Caputi over to your uh, I can't believe audit. you called it. He did call it. He did call it. I wouldn't say call it, but I, I saw it as a possibility. I And I don't know, like, everybody on the radio today was right, like, where is this coming from? But, it, I mean, I thought it was like a Chris Long type of thing where you just bring in a guy who just makes turnovers, just comes in, doesn't do a lot numbers wise, but like just changes the game a little bit. Uh, I don't, now that he's actually signed, it's kind of like, I, I got to look at the money to see if I like the deal or not. The money's, um, the money's important. I think, I don't think it's a lot though. Just it's because a critical how late part. It is in free agency. It, it can't be too much. Um, I, I think we should just go through real quick and like, just say like our like immediate thoughts on it. Don't go into too much depth. Um, Cause we do got to get to the Sixers. I, I'd say it's a, it's a decent signing. Um, we're going to have that rotation of three guys. We're going to have Sweat, Barnett, and him. Um, I think Sweat's going to take the most of the snaps, probably. If, would you, I think we'd agree on that. But um, I think he's going to yeah, be like a I locker room so. guy. And like he's going to like be able to teach like some of the younger guys a little bit about, like, you know, I mean, he's like been a great, uh, an amazing player throughout his career. I think he's going to be a good locker room presence. Um, the only downside of this is, like, I don't really see, besides, like, that, like, locker room presence, I don't see much of a point in, high, in signing a 33-year-old defensive end. Because of this rebuild we're going into, yeah. but other than that, I mean, it's, he's a good player, and I think he has a lot to offer. Phillies fans love uh, locker room signings, don't you know that, Brits? <laughs> Ryan Kerrigan, Al yeah. Horford, you know, all the best. People, people were comparing him to Chris Long, <laughs> like the Chris Long signing, and I was like, yeah, like we signed Chris Long when we we're ready to win a Super Bowl, not when we're <laughs> not, not when we're going well, into a that's, rebuild. <laughs> that's the thing that makes this so weird. Is like we're not. We're not there yet. Like I, and even for him, when he want to join a team, that's that's more there than us. Well, I believe I saw, he's coming off of an injury. He is. Or, and I saw his top three uh, teams that he wanted to go through, and, and it was the Bengals, the Pittsburgh Steelers, and then us. So, kind of a weird places to be as far as like you know, Bengals also in a rebuild. Um, Steelers are more there than us, but even then, um, they were kind of shaky towards the the last leg of the season last year. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I think we're, that, we're, we're hiring him as half a coach, I think. Yeah. If you think room. about his cities that he wants to go to, they're all sort of in the same, in the same area, location. And nobody sense. mentioned that earlier today. And it's it matters a lot for when Is people from, move places. Maybe like that area? Well, he's in Washington now. So, I mean, just moving, staying on the East Coast sort of uh, location, I yeah. think that's what he was considering. So, I, I think it was less team and more just where he wants to end up in life, you know. I think it's a lot like the Chris Long signing. I agree with Brits that it's sort of maybe not the right time to sign. Yeah. Weird, like weird, Long, weird uh, placement. Weird timing. I do think he's maybe a little bit better at this stage of his career than Chris Long was when we signed him. And Chris Long helped us. And at the same time, when we signed Chris Long, we didn't think we were going to be going for a Super Bowl season. Maybe the Eagles organization, <laughs> maybe Nick maybe. Sirianni thinks we are. Uh, Eagles seventeen and zero. That's all I gotta say. Nick Sirianni, from listening to him and, and his conclusion. interviews, he uh, is definitely pretty pretty high on his team. Yeah, I mean, yes, yeah. he's, he's a character for sure. He's he's high on something. <laughs> we, <laughs> we, he's high on those rocks, papers, and scissors. Uh, um, we thought Doug was crazy. He said in the 2017 season that this team looks like the the Packers uh, in the far days. So, and it ended up looking like that when we're hoisting up the Lombardi Trophy at the end of the year. So, we'll see. We'll see. I don't know. Weird, weird timing of the signing. Um, but you know, I don't. I don't hate it. I don't hate the guy. I just it's just no, weird. I don't hate it either. It's kind of a weird thing. All right. So back to the Kerrigan signing, aka Sixers. God. All right. Welcome back, folks. Welcome back. We just talked a ton of Eagles, but now it's time to turn it over 
to the Philadelphia 76ers. And the big question here is, who the hell are they? Um, and is are they the same team in the season that they are in the playoffs? That's really the big question. Jackson, I know you got something to say about this. Um, so tell me what you got. I'm just confused as to why you think they'd be a different team in the playoffs. I think that, yes, we're holding back things mid-game. Like, we don't want to give all our cards away during the regular season. But I think that we're more likely that team that you see in the fourth quarter buckling down on defense and extending our lead to win the game in the playoffs. So, so the reason why I ask it, because talking back to episode one from last week, you know, you had said you were worried because we're playing all these scrubs in teams and in, in not knowing who we really are against the superstar teams, even though you said, you know, we'll probably beat them out anyway. And I, I agree. I think, um, I think other teams need to fear the Sixers right now. I don't think we need to worry about what we're going to be going up against at the, especially at this point in time in the early rounds. Um, definitely don't count anybody out, you know, play your best, you know, in each series, but at the same time, I, I have high expectations for this team. I want them to win it all. I, I think I want to set that high high enough a bar for them this year. Absolutely. Anything less than uh, you know a, a finals appearance, you know, I would say is a uh, finals appearance. You say you wouldn't a, accept it just, at, a, at a minimum. I would say okay if we took the Eastern Conference Finals to Game Seven and okay. lost. I like you know, that. I'd be disappointed again. See, but no, we've been there again, like we've been there before, and this is supposed to be the year we take the next step as a team. And you know, we we've, we've been on Game Seven on a conference final before. We haven't been to the conference finals with this team. Yeah, not with this team. I mean, not not since what two thousand one, right? Yeah, yeah. two thousand. I think it was two thousand one. Was the last time we were in the uh, conference final, we won, right? That's what yeah, we got the finals. We, we got there. We against the Lakers. We just, we just yeah. didn't finish. Yeah. yeah. The uh, so, I think Clay, what you're th- what you're talking about is when we played Toronto, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, that yeah. was the game, the series before. Set so divisional. Yeah. Shit. But you know, I buy a bucket. Saying, I, I only I, buy a bucket though. I completely agree. Like, there's there's like this like misconception that like the the Sixers like are like have no chance against the Nets or something, and I just don't understand how that's like a a thing. Like our, uh, the Nets have like such a completely different team than us, and I think it's like a horrible matchup too, because like we play so much defense, they play no defense, and I think the 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 playoffs get so much more defensive, and it's going to be tough for them to come like match up against us. I I agree, and I think you, I think you want the Nets coming in. I think you want to continue just to play your game. Don't play their game. Don't be trying to keep up with the shooting. Uh, with with the Nets, I think you just want to defend, stop them as much as you can, and then you know, JoJo, you do your thing. Um, leave it up to your shooters. Take it into, you know, take it into. Uh, I'm, I'm losing my words here. I'm Sirianni and this this take right now. Just 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 you know, stick to your game that you've been doing this year. Play you know heavy defense, and then you know, kick it out to your shooters when you need to. I'm not worried about the first round. I don't think I'm worried about the second round. I think we can beat the Knicks. I think we could beat the Hawks. I think that um, first round, who are we going to play? Like, it's going to be either the Wizards, the well, Celtics. I'm a little, I'm a little worried about the Celtics because of PTSD from the past few postseasons, but I think we're a much better team than them this year. They're a much worse we, team than they've, yeah. than they've been. I'm yeah. not worried about them at all. Yeah. I'm only worried about once we come Eastern Conference Finals, maybe against the Nets, the Bucks. Uh, if the Heat pop off, I would be worried about them. I think we purposely played the Heat in a way to end the year that we didn't give enough of our cards away for them to really game plan as well against us as they could. I think that may have been strategic. I don't know. Yeah, I don't, again, I think we kind of went into the this last four games from the last time we talked and just knew that we didn't need to put our gas, our foot all the way on the gas pedal for these first two games that we were going to you know, pull one off against the Magic. Yeah, um, I think we that was a ended up game. pulling off both of them. So you know. Yeah, I think it was a given we we're going to win those games. That was like, a, like Jackson said, I don't think it was like too much of a like a worry to go against the Heat and like put, like just go all in and try to win that game. We definitely were going to win one of those games against the Magic. Uh, yeah. It's like yeah, like the only worry is the conference finals. We should make it there. If we don't make it there, it's 
I don't know what would happen. I think the city will explode. Um, it's <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. I, I think the only thing we've been talking about is this conference final. So if we were to, to trip up before then, it would be a massive disappointment. Yeah, I, I mean, looking at this, if I have to go through predictions, I think Indiana takes it. I think we probably play against them. You know, I, I think, yeah, I, I think we you probably think play against will them. Beat, uh, the loser of Boston, Boston versus Washington. The yeah, I, I just don't have a lot of faith in those teams. I think Boston has, has took a huge downturn from last year um, in being the three seed last year. I, I just don't think. Even with the players that they do have, you know, maybe it's different come playoff time because it's only, you know, games that they one game each that they have to play. But, um, yeah, there's there's a chance that we face Boston, but I'm not scared of them. In any, should we any sense. Uh, should we run through exactly how the play in game works? Yeah, we can go through it. I'll let you guys take that one. Play Jackson. Okay. Basically, um, the play in games, the ninth and 10th seed play each other and the seventh and eighth seed play each other. The loser of the seventh and eighth seed plays the winner of the ninth and tenth seed, and the loser of that game we play in the playoffs. Yes. Or the winner, the winner of that game we play. The uh, winner of the seven and eighth seed game uh, plays the number uh, two seed, the Nets. Right. So I personally think <sighs> that the Pacers are going to win against uh, Charlotte, Charlotte, and that the uh, Wizards are going to beat Boston, and then we're going to. Uh, face, I guess, the winner of Boston versus Indiana. Pacers. I would rather play Boston, honestly. Versus Indiana? Yeah. Are you saying that just based on the games this year that they've had against them? And I think we, well, I know we have a few. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm not worried about that first round at all. I, we, we play any yeah. one of those teams, it's going to be, I think it's going to be an easy win. We probably would take it in five. Yeah, I mean, if you're, if you're looking at this whole top half, <laughs> Of the teams here, I'm not. I'm not scared of any of those teams, to be quite honest with you. And yeah. it's a I'm big failure if we can't take one of those teams. I think we should only be scared of the Bucks, the Nets, and maybe the Knicks. I think the Knicks are playing well. They're a hot team. I'm gonna face a hot team. Uh, and so what? Have, play well. What about they the were heat? hurt all year. Now they're getting healthy. Right. I think the Heat are good. I don't think there's any way that we can play the Heat based on their seeding. Yeah, if unless you, it's the Eastern Conference Finals. Yeah, I I think that's a redemption game for Milwaukee after the Heat beating them last year. So I don't think the Bucks do any. I think they pull out all the stops to to take that game, uh, take that series. Um, just just looking at this and how the play-in game works, like you were explaining, Jackson, this really sucks for that seventh and eighth seed where they were promised that first round and now have to play, you know, two games to get there. Two games, yeah. Um, so just really two chances to get out for. Decent teams. I mean, you know, Charlotte's n probably nothing to really uh, say is a, a contender. But, um, but yeah. Arguably, I, I'm not... though, if you are supposed to be in the playoffs, you should be able to win two games in, in a row against teams that are supposedly worse than you. Right. Right. Yeah. It's just it's just one of those things that anything can happen in one game. Yeah. yeah. I don't. I don't necessarily like 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 it, but. I guess it's. I think it's just a ratings grab or like a, like a, a viewership grab. They're just trying to get the playoffs. Like it's it's basically a playoff expansion. It is. That's yeah, all it is. I don't. I don't really understand what they're going for with it. To be honest, it's like they're adding in wild card, basically. I mean, I mean, think about the seventeenth game being added in the NFL season. Baseball they wanted a wild card, and they should have just actually break the NBA into divisions. But the NBA divisions haven't meant anything for years. Yeah, baseball's done the same thing. I think everybody's just trying to expand their playoffs to get more viewership. It's like. I think that's what everybody's going for right now. I mean, even even uh, last year we did the same thing with in the everybody NFL. likes a big tournament. The NFL did the same <laughs> thing last year, right? The Super Wild Card Weekend. Yeah, I mean, just think about it. if your team's in it, you're going to watch it, right? It's not. There's no way you're not going to go watch that game. So it's either the difference of that. It's either the difference of getting Philadelphia's market to watch a game, or not at all. So I mean, you're going to. I see why they added it. Um, it sucks for the actual the, teams. I think. Yeah. Viewership wise, it makes sense. Yeah. 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 yeah that's what it boils down to. I, I mean, I think if we're going to actually analyze this, like, what? how do we actually match up against the Nets and the Bucks? Because those are the most likely teams we're going to play in the conference final. One or one of the two. I think it ends it's up probably being the, the Nets. Nets. It's gonna, it, I'm, I'm honestly not afraid of the Nets at all. 
at this point. That's crazy. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. If, I don't know you if you guys have been the best, following. They have like three of the like, best scores of all time, dude. Yeah, dude, but I don't know if you've been following. Kawhi is not. His head's not even in the game. Keep calling. You keep, not, calling Ka- you keep calling Kawhi. Kawhi. You keep calling not on the Kyrie. team. You keep calling Kyrie so. Kawhi. <laughs> Kyrie, his head's not even in the game. Yeah, keep he doing talking, it, man. He, he's been uh, he's been talking about uh, that's because I couldn't give a shit about him to be honest. <laughs> He's been talking about like stuff that's been going on in Israel. He's like, you know, having one of his like woke moments. Uh, he, d- he does tend like, to do that. <laughs> where it's like, yeah, dude, yeah. He's also get, talked about flat Earth and all that. We, fun we get stuff. it. Well, that was his comments the other day. It was like he was like, you know, this just playoffs just you know the NBA is just a game. You know, there's bigger stuff in in the world besides basketball. It's like, yeah, dude, we get that, but like we're asking you questions about basketball right now. <laughs> <laughs> so. <laughs> Yeah, so, like, stop trying to be a woke, a woke dude, and he's like, you know, he just doesn't have. I heard someone put it a really good way the other day is like, he's just one of those guys who was just born with a ton of talent, but just like doesn't care about like basketball. I feel like you know, he likes you know the lifestyle and stuff, but like you know, he's not what? like someone like LeBron James who like is like okay. in love with the sport. Yeah, I, I get to see I'll, that. I'll, I'll, gi- I'll give you that because they're two different animals. Like, LeBron what? is kind of like the Tom Brady of basketball. Like, he'll do anything just to get the championships, break all the, you know, stats. And, like, just cares so deeply about the game. I, I think, yeah, they're probably two different levels. But that doesn't mean Kyrie's not going to drop 50 points in a playoff game. Yeah, regardless of what Kyrie says, regardless of the fact that he uses his platform to promote misinformation, he's still a good <laughs> basketball player. And Harden and uh, Durant. Are gonna get their own. They're gonna put up like thir- Durant's gonna put up like thirty points. Easy. Harden's gonna put up like twenty points with ten assists and a bunch of rebounds. Um, Kyrie's gonna put up like twenty five points or something, and it's gonna be a tough matchup. Regardless, we're gonna have to play a ton of defense, and we're gonna have to be on our game scoring points. Who do we put on who? Yeah, that's the big I think question. Simmons. Simmons will probably be on either. Who do you think, Harden or Durant? I think. Probably Durant, right? Or I mean, probably know? Harden, and then you probably have uh, you probably play a lot more. Um, if I almost said Tyrese. I can't get anyone's name right. Thibault. <laughs> you probably see a ton. I more think we Thibault. might start George Hill and put George Hill on Kyrie that game. George I don't know. Kyrie. All I know is I hope Doc Rivers has some kind of strategy once we get to that point because I'm no expert on this. I. I, I've gone back and forth on this one a lot. The media always asks this question, and I don't think anybody has the right answer. I don't think there is a right answer because I think they're scoring either way. But it's who do you put on who to make sure that you can still win the game at the end of the day, even when Harden, Durant, uh, Kyrie all still end up having like twenty, at least 20 points each. I mean, I just hope Doc Rivers has a plan. You just have to make them one. Win. Go ahead. One other thing I'll say is I think that in round one, definitely, and potentially even round two, the Sixers are actually going to be able to run a deep bench. And you're going to see like people like Tyrese Maxey and Isaiah Joe and Paul Reed playing with, you know, six minutes left in the fourth quarter because, yeah. you know, we just absolutely are blowing teams away. <laughs> I think you're right. Even in the first round. Which is going to help. Too. I hope so. It's, I, yeah, I, it I, will hey, absolutely help. We, you know, if we get to the point where Isaiah NBA Joe's going in. The last six minutes of the first round, like consistently, just get all that rest time. That's, that's fantastic. That's what like LeBron's used to, like used to do all the time. Like like back when he was running things in the first two rounds, it wasn't even hard. He just sit in the last like have like six seven minutes of the game. Hey, I'll I'll be That'd happy. Be good to play around. I'll be happy if Big Energy Joe. If we if we the scale of Joe's playing in this game goes from Big Energy Joe to Average Joe. So <laughs> and, to bench and, Joe. To bench Joe. <laughs> um. <laughs> So to Sleepy Joe, I yeah, do think so. that he is going to pop off to a whole nother level this playoff. Yeah, I think he's, he's uh, MVP of the season. I mean, he's got a chip on his shoulder for sure. If he doesn't get this MVP, I don't think he's going to. Not. Yeah, he's definitely not. They're not going to give it to him. It's, I, it's I, yeah. Chance. I mean, yeah, he's not getting it. With the season Jokic has put up, it's it's no contest. I mean, they're both really good players, but Jokic hasn't even missed a game, and he's putting up arguably just as good at numbers. The yeah. assists, the rebounds. I, yeah, I, I think would, Jokic. I, I think yeah. Jokic. I think Jokic not missing a game is probably one. Or, you know, That's not having reason. those missed games. He's is top five the only six reasons. rebounds and points. 
Yeah. Yeah. Assist rebounds. Well, yeah, in top five, but um, it would be. I think it would just be a disservice, sad to give it to Curry if, uh, yeah, just because Jovic wouldn't wouldn't get it. So Jokic. So, uh, it, I mean, don't get me wrong. Steph has popped off like insanely with historical numbers, but it would be sad if it, you know, Jokic doesn't well, get it. Yeah, if Jokic doesn't get it, then it's got to be Embiid. There's no way that Curry yeah, should get it. Yeah, it wouldn't be Steph. I, I think it, it's it's up, up to those two, and then it's just going to come down to the games played, which is yeah, which, which is fair. Which is fair, but I think we know who the real MVP is. Yeah, if the real MVP is Embiid, Embiid is yeah. the best player. Yeah, I think yeah, yeah. he's arguably like the best player in the NBA. Yeah, <laughs> which is crazy for a center in these days. So we talked a little bench. Um, you know, let's kind of close out here, boys, on the Sixers bench and oh, not totally close out on who's that ninth guy, right? Who's the guy? Um, you know, we know oh. on that bench, George Hill's probably coming in, Howard's coming in. Um, you Thibel know, is Thibel, def- Thibel def- should eight. definitely be in there. I know I have his picture in here. Thibel should definitely be that eight, but between whether it's Shake, Cork, Maybe even Maxi now making a case for himself. Um, who's Man, kind of that nice boy spot balled right? out last night? I think thirty points or something like that. Yeah, I think so. he's got. He's got. He's definitely got something special to him. You know, when you watch him play in person, he's aggressive for sure. Yep. I think that we said it best though last week when we said I think there will be ten guys, and I think that both Shake and Cork will be in there for the uh, for the playoffs. Yeah, I, yeah, I mean, like I just said, I honestly, we can go, we might be going 12 deep in the first round. You know, we might be pulling out Rajon Tucker. I think that's a big stretch. At the end of the I don't games. Know about that. I yeah, think yeah, arguably, maybe not, maybe not Tucker, but uh, definitely could see some, some Reed like, and Joe. Yeah, I'd say like 10 probably for the first two rounds. It's going to, it's going to shrink obviously in the conference final. Um, I think arguably, as the playoffs go deeper, we could see Seth's minutes dropping and George Hill's minutes increasing. Yeah, I I, I can see that happening definitely. What do you just think? Just because of the fact that George Hill is also an incredible three point shooter, but he just brings a little bit more on the defensive end. What do you think about? And we're like, gonna need that. What do you think about Thibault's like minutes? Like, what do you what do you expect? Like, how many? How much is he gonna play? Because I know obviously he's gonna twenty play a maybe. Lot. I hope. Like. Because like I was like looking at like this like I mean we're gonna, I feel like we're gonna need him against the Nets to play a lot more. He's just situational. If we need big defense, we're gotta bring in uh, Thibel. Yeah, I mean, and I like. Do you like? Do you guys feel confident in him like out there though, like to score though, like when we need him to? If when you're playing him, him in a lineup for scoring. deep, yeah, I mean, if you're putting him out there in a lineup, you you're putting him out there for defense, and he's probably gonna be playing in a lineup that can get stuff done anyway. Usually is matched up with you know with Toby and I'm, Ben. And... Yeah, I'm just thinking about the, like the playoffs though. Like like if we if we do have him out there early in the game, like I mean, you think he's just gonna be out like there in like later ends of the game, like like third quarter? No, he's I gonna be spread around the whole what game. What we've seen this season, he comes in third and fourth quarter and sort of closes down the game. Yeah, I think we'll get the points early, and then we'll see if we need him or not. Okay. Like if they're putting up big points, then we'll put him on Ky- on Kyrie and hopefully slow him down. Yeah, my, my thing was like, yeah. like you're gonna have like you're gonna have like some guys like times it's gonna be rough for like us to like get those like we're gonna need a lot of points I'm saying to, to beat the Nets so I'm just saying like I, is it gonna be tough to get a guy out there that's not like a scorer I get like I mean if you have like faith he can get those I mean shots. you're gonna have to stop the Nets from scoring yeah. at some point yeah I know I, I just, think I, what I think what you're hoping with Thibel is you put him out there and the amount of points that he subtracts from the other team hopefully makes up for the amount of points that he's not scoring. Yeah. Exactly. I think it's the point differential that makes a difference there. So as long as he's out there, if it's more points that we're gaining from his presence versus then having another shooter in his place, like a Quirk Maz, I think I'll take the thigh ball every day. Because with Quirk being shaky going, I mean, he's 37% on average from the three line, from three points um, throughout this season. I like Quirk. I like when he kind of pushes that momentum, gets a quick back-to-back threes. Um, you know, but I think I'd rather have Thibel's, you know, two steals per game, turning that into a couple threes, you know, down the court, taking points away from Kyrie or Harden or D- Durant. So I think I like Thibel taking up that time and, and doing more on the defense. Because you really, you really can't underestimate how good Thibel is. I I think I saw a stat defensive uh, 
Fox plus minus. He's putting up a top five all time. I saw uh, that. all positions. Uh, Dude, yeah. you, right. you sent us that picture like two weeks ago. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that was that was a wild stat for especially for how much he plays. It's top not five. Good. Yeah. He plays the game like football. I'm still gonna say it. He needs to be recruited by the Eagles. I, I don't know what he's doing in the off season, but he needs to be taking the other corner spot because this dude, the way the way he visualizes the ball, he 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 knows where it's going before it even leaves somebody else's hands. So, um, I think you just need that. I mean, the there's that one play where he literally blocked he blocked the he blocked the shot and then stole the pass from the same from the same like he so the, the same shot, guy. The guy got the shot back and went to pass it and he stole the pass. Yeah. <laughs> He's That's mind blowing. He's a defensive wizard, dude. Yeah. No, he he knows where the ball's going. He, he awesome sees the see future. Him, like in the next few years too. Just uh, so fun to watch. Yeah, to see him develop. Like you said, you I, ideally, you know, he gets more shots off. But if he's stealing the ball and giving it and getting the ball in somebody's hands that's going to shoot anyway, what difference does he does it make? As long as it gets us more opportunities to shoot the ball and less opportunities for the Nets to do that. So. Yeah, I mean, yeah, Thibault, big piece in the future, and I think he'll play a decently big role in the playoffs this year. All right, so we're locked in on Thibault at the eighth. Who takes up the ninth? Well, and so you're saying George Hill? You're saying George Hill? So I'm uh, saying Thibault, Howard, Howard automatic Hill lock. are automatic locks in my book. Yeah, yeah. I think yeah. nobody would disagree with that. So I mean, what, Thibault's what, what an automatic nine, lock. Nine and possibly but ten. Then I think. Shake and Corkmaz, I think, are both automatic locks. I think it would be hard to choose yeah. between the two. I think we're going with a Ted Bad Bidge. So is there a situation where you put in Cork over Shake and vice versa? Well, arguably, I think if there's one person that's going to miss the playoffs, it might honestly be Shake because you have George Hill at that point guard spot. You've got uh, Thibel at the shooting guard. You've got uh, Corkmaz at small forward. You've got Dwight Howard at uh, center. Where would uh, you would would you really want? Where to would have shake two fit? Point guards two point guards out? on the on the bench. Yeah, I guess not. I mean, they could be both rotational guys if you want to save George Hill some minutes. But I think, yeah, I think this once you get the playoffs, everybody's playing more minutes anyway, and it kind of takes less time off of uh, those bench guys. So I, yeah, I, I don't know. I'm kind of indifferent on it. Um, as long as the starters are doing what they need to do, and the bench can just kind of fill. Um, fill the gap when those starters are out. I'll be happy. We do, we do but, win, we do win on the bench side too as well against the Nets. I mean, yeah, their their bench is way weaker than ours, so that's right. a plus as well. Um, they're, they're four people deep. Yeah, they're, they they are spent like how much money on three guys <laughs> or four guys actually, like a ridiculous and I, amount. And I, and I ask who the Sixers are too because. Do you have faith in in Toby? I think that's the one guy where I'm like, I hope he steps it up and stays, you know, above the 20 points versus going below. Um, looking at his stats for the season, this is really this is kind of crazy. Looking at this, he has um 30 games where he has 20 plus points, 30 games where he has less than 20 points, and exactly two where he has 20 points. So he's like. <laughs> directly in the middle of game? being a 20 point guy but we need they him to go to over the 20 I think so I think he'll, he'll I think you're going to see a uh, uh, roughly the same type of toby that we're going to see in the regular season here probably like at his better at his better half of the form you know yeah i don't necessarily think we need him to like step up anything crazy over 20 points like uh, I think it's gonna be like Joel's gonna be another level, so he's gonna that's gonna make up for points. Well, I think he needs to step up if if Ben or isn't putting up points, or if you know Joe uh, JoJo has an off game. Yeah, I mean, Toby is still what the second leading scorer on his team, so yeah. I think What'd we could address if if Toby's having a bad game, uh, it could be bad because we're playing him for so many more minutes. Like sometimes he'll have a bad game, and we'll get those points back from the bench players. And we're not going to have the bench players in the playoffs as, as often as we do in the regular season. So if he's having a bad game where he's scoring less than 20 points, it can really be bad. Um, well, honestly, dude, after watching, and, and I don't want to sound like too out, but like after watching Maxi, and I don't think he's going to get a crazy amount of playing time in the, in the playoffs, but I think you could very well see him 
at a certain point if we just need an offensive spark because stuff is just getting stale and people are missing shots that someone like him comes in to just kind of give us a little bit of a spark plug off the bench to just kind of get some offense going. I can see that. Like I said, he's an aggressive guy. Like he, he, He's pretty he, impressive he, sometimes. Yeah, I mean, he takes the ball right to the yeah. bucket yeah. and shoots threes. He's uh, being at the game last night and watching him uh, do his thing yeah, was, uh, was really person. fun. Yeah, really yeah. fun. And he's going to he's gonna be balling out for a couple of years in this league, for sure. Yep. I like no, to keep him around, that's, that's for point. sure. Like, having a guy like him is actually kind of nice. But hopefully it doesn't draft. come to that. Uh, hopefully Possibly we are just... steal of the draft, you know? Like, playing way over his actual drafted value. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Hopefully it doesn't come to that though. Hopefully our, you know the stars are just putting up points. Won't need to do that. <laughs> yeah. If it comes to that, we're in bad, we're in bad times. <laughs> yeah, it's bad times at Ridgemont High. All right, all right, fellas. I think that's a good place to stop for episode two. Thanks for hanging that's with me. Quite a long one. It's quite a long ride. We said it was going to be bumpy. I didn't think we would think it would be long, but you know here we are. Um, yeah. Any anything else you want to tell the people before we kind of shut it down for tonight? Oh, go Sixers, man. I hope they freaking yeah. make this ride. One go seed. Sixers. Next time we talk, we should uh, be gearing up for some, some good playoff action. Yeah. That's and good. I want Sixers. to see those Eagles 17 and O's in the comments. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 Please, uh, we'll, uh, we'll get Caputi on the timer next time. Try to... Uh, yeah. Yeah. Keep yeah. It, like, short as, if I don't, as if I don't work hard enough on this show. All right, guys. <laughs> um, we'll, we'll close it up there. Take a look at the bottom left-hand corner of the slides. Uh, on every slide, we include them because you, we want you to follow us. So on Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube is where we post. Please post your comments uh, below the video, and we'll see you next week. Talk you to you guys later. See ya. The pod has landed. Jesus.